Welcome everyone to the Easter live stream. Getting started a little bit late. Apparently the crowd can't uh, contain themselves and chant for starting sooner and all that. So we had to teach a lesson of patience today. And that was five minutes per instance there. You know, it's one of those things very appreciative to all the subscribers and everything. But there is that dark side of YouTube that comes with it of people that are not appreciative. And I just want to put that in perspective. I've given up my Sunday Easter with my family, and my wife is act actively packaging packages, packaging packages, yes, right now, so that we can make this happen. Meanwhile, we don't need to be, you know, lobbied against of why hasn't it started on time when literally I was clicking the button at exactly 11 o'clock when people started getting out of control. So, uh, you know, I'm just never gonna stand for that. I don't like to surround myself with negative behavior. I'm here to help you guys. Uh, it was my intent to do it for many, many hours today, and I was getting things ready, you know, like things to drink and that kind of stuff, so uh, that's why we're late. So apologies to all of you that were sitting there patiently and waiting and going to enjoy a good show, and to the other people, you know, obviously we're going to have to work something out where we just ban you guys because you're not adding to the conversation. If we don't add to the conversation, then we're not really needing to be speaking. So, all right, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, I want to do a lot of Q&A, that kind of stuff. I haven't done a show like that in a long time. Normally, I'm putting together a topic at the beginning, and I know there's a bunch of people from uh, Europe and other time zones that don't normally get to participate. And because we're doing it early in the morning, we have that opportunity. So hopefully, I can get to answer some of their questions and, uh, yeah, go from there. I'm going to start with where we've got some cool trips planned, and I want to know what you guys want to see. Um, so I know next week I'm going to Florida. We're going to do some collecting. I'm probably going to visit a fish farm or two, hopefully, if it works out this time and weather's okay and that kind of stuff. That's kind of a little mini trip. Uh, and then I'm back for, uh, so we go there for four days, then we're back for four days, I think. And then it's the AGA, the uh, Aquatic Gardeners Association Convention. And that's here in my hometown, and we're the platinum sponsor. So if you're coming to that, tickets are already sold out, so I hope you got your tickets. If you're coming anyway... You can still come and uh, chat with me and whoever else in my booth. The vendor room is completely open to the public, but the banquet dinner and the talks and that kind of stuff, they're sold out. They're at capacity for those rooms. So I uh, hope you got in early for that one. Then I've got about uh, a week or so from AGA, because I think AGA goes till the 6th or something like that. And then uh, right now it's penciled in about the, you know, the 12th or so, mid-month basically, I'm going to fly out to Israel for a week, so that's kind of its own cool thing. We're going to visit uh, one of the biggest guppy farms in the world and whatever other stuff we can find. And then uh, we're going to go from there. We're going to fly another eight-hour flight and go to Jakarta, and we're going to visit stuff there as well. I'm hoping to film like at least one fish store at each location just to see what the local fish store is like compared to, let's say, America or Germany or anything I've visited in the past, like Japan. Uh, we're staying there for roughly a week-ish, and then we fly to Papua New Guinea. Now, that's the one I'm a little sketched out about. I've been doing quite a bit of research on uh, the gang activity and that kind of stuff there, and we have someone local that's going to be a guide, and we're flying in as three of us. I'm going with the Shrimp King, and, uh, you know, unofficially so far, Dennerle uh, will be sponsoring that, so that'll be a paid trip. Not, well, not that I get paid, but they'll be paying for my flights. Um, so I'll be giving a shout out to them as I film all the cool footage, which I think is a small price to pay. Uh, and mostly we're getting access. I could pay for those tickets, but I don't have access to Chris and uh, his people that already knows. You know, So flying into Papua New Guinea and knowing no one is a lot different than flying into uh, there and going, oh, we already have someone's going to have a house. We know where to go. You know, We're putting our requests. We want to see um, rainbow fish in the wild. So I've seen some very cool pictures. You know, I'm a little bit afraid for myself of kind of three weeks traveling, right? So that's that's week number three, and at that point, there's the least amount of public bathrooms, the least amount of drinking water and all that. So it's going to be uh, a challenge, I think, to make sure we stay hydrated and we don't run into trouble and packing very lightly. You know, you kind of think about it three weeks out of town. There's not really going to be ways to do laundry in Papua New Guinea, not that we need to necessarily, but... Um, so I'm working on all that in between these kind of four-day spurts of like trip, convention, trip type of deal. And uh, from there, we don't have too much more planned other than it looks like we're going to be doing a lot in Europe this year. Uh, a lot of conventions kind of in the Netherlands and Germany. And uh, I think we've been invited to go to 
uh, Vivarium, which is one of the bigger things. We know we're going to Sips, which is a Chinese international pet show that'll be in Shanghai this year. Um, what else? I think we're probably going to do a trip to Peru this summer. We're working out the details on that still. And yeah, there's all I know is the last half of the year is pretty packed with traveling. So I'm hoping you guys are going to want to see some of that stuff because um, I've already signed up for it, you know, and I, it's one of those things where we're 800 videos in roughly and, um, you know, don't know where else to go. Like yesterday I filmed six videos uh, and that's, you know, different like stuff for 10 gallon tanks, 20 gallon tanks, 40 gallon tanks. But then also uh, I used my fancy new DB meter and did some air pump comparison tests and that kind of stuff. You can hear it. You can hear how loud I am. Look, oh, geez. Uh, so, you know, buying equipment to do some equipment tests and that kind of stuff. We reactivated the um, the real Fish Talk channel and made it Aquarium Co-op Clips where we're going to take live streams like this and cut it down into bite-sized pieces and we'll release that over there. So if you haven't subscribed to that, you might want to. If you can't normally make this and you want, oh, there's like the headlines. You'll miss a lot of the banter, but, um, you know, you will get some of those highlights. So we're doing that. What other videos did we filmed yesterday? We did a, a fish room tour because I've got new fish, which you guys probably haven't seen anything about yet. Uh, what else do we do? We did, I know there's one other video. Oh, we did a video about uh, these pad filters. And just because I 100% I believe this should be the number one selling product out of my store. Like there's a, like Easy Green is the number one selling product, but Everyone on the planet basically can put this into their filter and get added value out of it. Where if you don't run plants, you don't need Easy Green. So um, I'm bringing in even more of these on the next cargo container because I, I truly believe once people understand how good this is and just like using it after a while, you're going to want every filter to, um, you know, have these. So I'm gearing up because I use them all the time. I use them for filters, but not only that. If I need to cut a little snippet out or I've got a little extra piece, that is the perfect thing to tie around like a branch or something like that. And then you root your Anubias or your Java Fern. The roots grow into it so easily, it really helps plant. I mean, there's there's a bunch of things to do with it, but even the scraps I find useful. I was even showing, I don't want to ruin the whole video, but a lot of, a lot of cool things with that. And uh, so yeah, we filmed six videos yesterday. Uh, also made some big moves. We've got some big announcements probably uh, coming up here, probably not next month because I'll be out of town the whole time, but we've got some huge projects going on that hopefully are going to start coming to fruition here for you guys. And I don't really like to show things until they're done because then it just seems like, oh yeah, you're going to do a thing. And someone, I think it was Camera Conspiracies, a, a guy I watch about cameras and that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, he's, I guess, the equivalent of me to the fish world and just doesn't sugarcoat it, but, you know, essentially it was... Quit telling us what you're going to do. Just show us what you're already done. And so I think that really rang true to me is like, instead of telling you, we're going to do all this cool stuff uh, and, you know, make a whole video about here's, you know, we're doing the stuff. We'll just show you like, look what we did. And here's how we did it. It was super cool. And we bring it down. So, yeah, uh, I guess at this point, I'm 20 minutes into the live stream, even though it's only 10 because we had a delay. Uh, we are running a giant sale today, and that is... 10% uh, off everything. Now I know on the surface you're going, that's only 10%, that doesn't sound like a lot. But all the prices are rock bottom already. You know, So it used to be, let's say a year ago, we'd have Valisneria at like $12.99, and then it would be like on a super one day only sale, it'd be 17% off. Well now it's $5 and then 10% off that. That price is way, way, way cheaper than it would have been last year. Just because you guys have helped us scale, we're selling a lot more. Right now we have six people in the warehouse packing currently, my wife included. So, you know, we're getting orders out as fast as we can because we're, we have the ability to ship on Sunday and we'll be packing, you know, all the way till the shifts end and we'll pick it back up on Monday. And yes, we've already negotiated with the post office. They'll be picking up on Monday, even though it's a holiday. But I do ask, give us some slack here. Uh... Just because there will be an insane amount of orders. It is technically kind of like two holidays, you know. And uh, there's always some leeway there of like, oh, geez, this was this part was brutal. The internet went down. Thing happened here. And uh, we fully intend to get everything out as fast as humanly possible. 
and we're pretty good at it. So I'll say that. We got a lot of people lined up to be working on that for you, and so give us that little bit of breathing room. Uh, but yeah, save 10%. The code is 300K. We hit 300,000 subscribers. That K means 1,000, so 300,000. 300 and the letter K, it's on the website. It's uh, all over the place. Uh, if you remember, we gave you a few hour access early, and uh, yeah. So someone asked, how do we get 100,000 Facebook fans in a week or in a couple of days? Uh, we're definitely uh, buying advertising. We're also, I'm being much more active. We're doing dedicated releases on uh, YouTube, we, or not YouTube, on Facebook. We've got some videos that are coming out over there, and we're doing, we're, I'm being a lot more, it's in my sites right now, because it companies, companies were starting to question whether the uh, YouTube was legitimate because they'd see like, well, yeah, you've got like 300,000 on YouTube, but you've only got like 40,000 on Facebook. And I was like, well, I just don't put any of my attention there. And they're like, and you got, you have more on Instagram than you do Facebook. Like what's going on here? So now I'm, you know, basically putting some more time towards Facebook and that type of stuff. You guys probably seen I'm a lot more active in the aquarium group support. Uh, that's just because that group is as our like Facebook page grows. So does the aquarium group support group and uh, you know a lot more questions being asked and things I can chime in on I don't have a whole lot of free time but I am chiming in when I can and uh, yeah that's that's kind of where that's going we want to you know keep pushing numbers up and up and up the, the higher these numbers get the more bargaining power we have as kind of a hobby and so I definitely use that to our advantage to try and go look who we can um, you know look who we can reach because when you tell the companies like, oh, 3 million people uh, watch the YouTube videos a month, they can't really see that without being like a YouTube nerd. All they see is a 300,000. They're going, 300,000? You said 3 million. Like, no, no, it is 3 million, but only 300,000 people have hit that, hit that uh, subscribe button, which, you know, if you haven't done that yet, please do that because it is an arbitrary number that doesn't technically matter to YouTube, but it does matter to all the companies we're working with and... I think our track record proves that the more success we can bring to Aquarium Co-op, the better pricing we can give you guys, innovative products, we can bring you better footage. Like it's one of those that there are definitely YouTube personalities, not even in just the fish realm, but like the more money they make, the content never changes. But the more money we have access to, the more crazy cool things I'm going to try and do and pull off, you know. So it it's one of those things I was, I'm talking with Jimmy and, uh, you know, he moves back to Ohio in July because he wants to be just, he likes it over there, right? And so he's moving there and we're trying to talk logistics of uh, filming and recording and some of these videos become very expensive. And so like Goliad Farms, for instance, we were kind of looking at that video and go, okay, what is that worth? Like it's hard to put a value on that other than I know what I paid, right? So for me, it's a plane ticket for myself and for Jimmy. We flew into Dallas and we did that event, right? Aquashella. But then we also rented a van, which was about $400. And we drove for five hours each way to go visit the farm, right? And meanwhile, Jimmy's getting paid for all that time. And then we film for three or four hours. And then we drive back for five hours, right? So that's how to capture the footage. And we used, you know, I think we used three different cameras on that particular shoot. And then... Uh, we get back, and now he's about three days, basically three 10-hour shifts into editing, and it's done now. So that's 30 hours that we have to pay someone, and at the bare minimum, like, you know, we're, we're going to assume that someone that works with the Aquarium Co-op is making more than people who start, which I think that's a fair assessment. Uh, people start at Aquarium Co-op at $17 an hour, so even if Jimmy was making the bare minimum you could make with Aquarium Co-op, at 30 hours... You can start seeing how that really starts adding up, right? Like, that's a lot of money. So, uh, that's all to make one video that, on average, will probably be seen by, let's say, 70,000 people. So, it'll do a little bit better than, let's say, an unboxing. And that will make us roughly $500. So, we'll come out net negative several thousands of dollars. But, because you guys support us and you buy from us on our website, you remember here, all that kind of stuff, like, all of that gets bottled up. Now, there are things that do help us, like, you know, our China video went viral, and so that's kicking us probably $400 a month. We put that right back into the travel budget to try and uh, bring you other cool stuff. Uh, and that's what we keep doing 
meanwhile, developing products and that type of thing. So, you know, I don't want to pretend that, you know, we're all sitting here being poor or anything, but do you realize that the money invested, we do try to reinvest back into cool content, stuff that I would want to see. You know, it took me seven years to get to uh, Goliad Farms, and that was just because I had fallen in love with what he was doing at a convention as a hobbyist, and then he was hit by, you know, kind of a hurricane, and then like another thing, and then another thing. You know, up until about six months ago, his home didn't even have a roof on it still, so it was still tarped over because they were waiting for insurance adjusters and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it got a little, got a little crazy. Um, what else do I want to talk about? I'm going to bring up, you know, I thought it was appropriate being we hit a milestone and, um, and that kind of stuff. We got this, and we put out a little video, and, you know, about 400 people watched it, but I want to make sure that, like, my employees get recognized. I mean, I'm a part of this, too, but this right here is an award we got when we were in Florida. So, this is, I don't know, you probably can't read it. Let me see. That, that makes it worse. The Retailer Excellent Awards in 2019, Aquarium Co-op got Best Customer Service at the Global Pet Expo, and what that really means like it, it sounds like okay yeah cool you, you did a thing good job you know um, but what it really means is this is the entire pet industry it's not just fish like we're not just the best customer service in fish dogs cats reptiles birds hamsters all of that mud bay you know all of these companies that are much bigger we literally have the best customer service now I want to point out that that is because we have a lot of dedicated people like Candy in the chat right now. We have my wife at work right now. We try to answer as many emails as we can. We try to be very good in store for you guys, all of that. Um, but we're not perfect. And that's what I, you know, just because we're the best this year, right? We got the award, doesn't mean we're perfect. And that's, I really want to strive that with people is, you know, we, yes, we trend at a, a 4.92 satisfaction rating out of five. You know, so there is 0.8 of people that are not satisfied with either our products or our service or something like that. And I'm not sure that we can connect with humans on a level much higher than that. So I'm okay with that. But do know that not everyone is a perfect fit for every person. There are people that really hate the fact that it might take four days to get a package if you live in Florida or you live in some outskirt town. And unfortunately, there's nothing we're ever going to be able to do about that because we're stuck in the corner up here in Washington. So... You know, there's things like that. Everyone's got a bad day. Maybe, you know, someone's pet died. Maybe family member is sick. There's always going to be stuff. But on the by and large, you know, all the employees, you know, myself included, we try our best. And that's that's really what we do is we just try our absolute best. And it's not that I guarantee you at the commerce we do every single day, um, you know, we are probably making two people angry every single day. Two people hate us. I'm sure of it. But we're also making hundreds of people who place orders and that kind of stuff very happy. And so I'm, I'm okay with, you know, one out of 100 just hating who we are and the other 99 being happy. I'd much rather be that than like 70, 30 or, you know, something like that. So, but yeah, we're going to add this uh, to the wall back here. Okay, let's put it right here. And... Uh, doesn't show very well on camera, but you know, it's there for me. And I, I usually don't talk about awards too often. Do I have my other one? I hid my other one out of sight even. This one we got, let's see, does it say? Yeah, 2016. So you guys might not have been around back then. I would have mentioned it briefly, but uh, I was also, it's all dusty. <sighs> I was also uh, honored to be top 40 under 40 for uh, the pet program, basically. So what it means is, of people under 40 years of old, of old, of age, um, that, you know, I'm recognized. So, you know, it's kind of weird to be recognized, but like on one hand, one of the other uh, people was the person that developed all the Phoenix lights. And another person was the person that developed all the glowfish, you know, so, but there was other pets in there too. So, you know, there's lots of dog and cat. There wasn't that many fish people under 40 that have made, you know, strides or whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, so that one was kind of like just me, so I don't, you know, I, the, this one took a whole team of people. This one back in 2016, much fewer people to uh, make those big moves, but, you know, there's been people with me the whole time, and that's important. Um, so hopefully we just keep stacking trophies, because if we're stacking trophies like this, it means we're doing a good job. So that would be the ultimate goal there. But, you know, as you, you know, I definitely brought that award to some of the bargaining tables when we were in Florida. It's like, 
yep, that's who you're dealing with. We provide amazing customer service. How do you want to work with us to provide that to your products? So, all right. Um, yeah, the fishy mailman, you've been around a long time, buddy. He remembers when we mentioned that. Yeah, it was over, you know, three years ago now, right? That's, it's crazy for me to think that it's been six years at this point, uh, the store and the online. And we actually, I actually started the aquarium co-op in 2012. So that's when we finally form or officially uh, made the LLC and all that. And then the journey actually started about uh, a year, maybe a year and a half before that. So really the aquarium co-op is a concept and all that in my mind where we were buying tanks used and storing them. We, we were driving by the, uh, driving by an old storage unit um, the other day, my wife and I, and she goes, do you remember when you couldn't, we were so broke, we couldn't afford a bottom storage unit. So I had roughly a hundred aquariums that I carried up a flight of stairs and stored it because the storage was cheaper there. And we didn't have, my garage is already full. So uh, we were buying tanks as cheap as we could. We were getting a lot of them at um, 25 cents. And, you know, then we stored them for, I think it was like four months. And I just remember nearly dying and wondering what, whose idea was it to store these up and down a flight of stairs. But the money was so tight at that point that uh, that's what we had to do. So, you know, it's just stuff like that. Like that memory is way long time ago. We even stored it in a different city than we lived in because it was cheaper there. And, uh, you know, now... Now, uh, luckily, we don't have to do anything that's, like, physically harmful, uh, you know, but making some good headway. Someone was asking if Jimmy's going to continue to edit uh, when he moves. Yes, that is the plan. We are uh, trying to figure out the best way to facilitate that. We think it's kind of back to contract employee. He bills hours. We negotiate a rate, and we make it all happen, and then we figure out flying and that kind of stuff. You know, it becomes like right now, um, Jimmy just works for us all the time, salaried employee. But if you can't, well, it's very difficult to do that with a remote employee because then you have to do weird taxes in other states and all that kind of crazy stuff. And so I want to make sure that we're fair by Jimmy. We pay him enough money that when we fly somewhere, for instance, you know, like a lot of businesses will pay for eight hours, but, you know, we might work longer than eight hours. So I just want to make sure it's all fair on all the sides. Uh, just like all my other employees, I want to make sure, you know, I provide for you guys, you guys provide for me, and we make something that works here. So um, definitely Jimmy and we were talking about the other day, he's like, yeah, we just need to sit down, figure out what's going to happen. Or not what's going to happen, but how it's going to happen. That's really the big difference is how is this going to play out? There's a lot of logistics involved when it, like we ran into it way back when Jimmy was remote. And that was limiting uh, internet connections from downloading so much. Um, downloading so much footage and, and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Alrighty. Someone says, so many people are leaving. What's the deal? I don't know. Are you talking about like the business? No. Uh, we're, we're picking up people like we picked up two in the last month. So we're, we have more employees than ever. Um, so yeah. People say, oh, Jimmy's gone. I don't believe he continues. That's cool, except he already did it remote, you know, and I'm, so it's one of those things that there's obviously things I have to leave out, right? Like I can't disclose reasons why he would be moving, right? You know, but there's things outside of work that are more important than work, right? We can all realize there's other factors in life that are more important than work, and you might want to be close to those, right? So uh, without disclosing more than that, uh, realize that, um, you know, it's not a work-related decision, so. All right, do I keep any oxalotls? I watched one video where he said he'd like to. Um, I have in the past. I've bred them, but I don't keep any currently, mostly because I run a fish room, and it's always kind of too warm for them. So, yeah, that's, that's what I would say to that, is cool, I was going to say fish, but cool thing to keep, but not my taste, if you will, right now. That doesn't mean I don't have a whole oxalotl farm in two years, but right now, not into that. So, got a bunch of new members, Angela Holland, Fish Lover, and Ryan Dorn. Welcome to the team. Yeah. Everyone's on about Jimmy. You can, you can have all the speculation you want. I will not give in to that. We've got Michael Swindle here is a, is a 
I was gonna. I don't know. Why I always say patron member. And for those of you that don't know, we did add a new fishbowl angry emoji, which we're always on the hunt for a good emoji and a good meme. So, you know, let us know. All right, what do we got going on? Hmm, a lot of talk about Jimmy. Yeah, everyone's. I think everyone's super afraid that you're gonna lose Jimmy. Like, I honestly don't believe we'll lose Jimmy because we go and do amazing things and we have a lot of fun together. So if we, and me by me saying this is gonna start a whole rumor mill, but if we lose Jimmy, it'd be a surprise to even me. I, I do not believe that to be the case at all. So, all right. Um, for those of you who are new, use the, use the code 300K, save 10% on the website today only, and we'll get it out as fast as we can. Uh, we're gonna talk about some products, I guess, because we're waiting for some questions to roll in. This, we finally got a good supply of it. So Vitacam, a lot of people were waiting, like, why are you guys always sold out of this? Because not many wholesalers sold a lot of it. And yes, we do ship it bagged, by the way, in case it ever exploded, which it shouldn't, but. Um, so yes, what do I use this for when I have sick fish, like hole in the head, when, um, well, so I see this right here. Someone says my Mabu is going blind. Why is that? Uh, I, one of the first things I would do is get vitamins in it. See if it can't be a vitamin deficiency or something like that. Um, also, Mabu puppers have this like weird haze to their eyes. So a lot of people think they're getting a cataract. That's just how their eyes are. So that could be going on. Uh, but I like to soak things like cocktail shrimp and you know stuff that only wants to eat like silver sides, all that kind of stuff, that really meaty stuff. When you soak it in the Vitacam, I just put a little bit in there. I, I never use it by adding it to the water, like to the tank. I always use it in food. Um, but I do find that you do that for a week or two and it can really improve the health on some fish that might have been a little bit neglected. It can really be help beneficial if, I wonder, I should look into that if they sell this by like the gallon or something like that. Because like for a, like a public aquarium. Because the reason I was saying is it's really good when you get fish that might have been neglected. So sometimes we import a fish or if we brought fish in from the wild or something like that where they're not normally getting or they've been you know, not getting a lot of food, this can really get a lot of vitamins back into them super quick. And so a little bit goes a long way. You know, it does say use, um, what does it say here? Add one drop per gallon per week or several drops in food once a day. That's the way I use it, the drops. So when you're using this thing as drops, it goes pretty far. Like this is gonna last you a year. I, I store it in the fridge. You know, it's high in omega-3s and that kind of stuff. And the, the best thing I could probably liken it to, which is a stretch, would be, um, you know, like putting an omega-3 uh, additive to, like, your dog or cat food for a better coat and just, you know, overall joint health and that kind of stuff. Like, it's not probably make or break, but it, I do find it to be helpful. So I myself, like, why I, it was here is I brought some home. I had run out, and I was like, yep, got to remember to grab some more uh, because it is super useful. So especially when you get predators that will only eat like frozen foods and that kind of stuff i love to load it up so all right let's grab let's see if there's any super chats i think i missed some and if i missed you as a member i apologize raymond brandon i missed you my bad ginger gray has been a solid supporter for quite a while now congratulations on 300k and happy easter well thank you hello i stole this name from a commenter just became a member welcome all right, did I see the copy of the Zis filter on Amazon? Uh, yes, TV4184. I have seen that copy. And so my initial, I haven't ordered one yet, and I don't know if I will, but uh, the things to know, and you'll see this coming out in a video, uh, the things to know, know is they are shorter. So inherently you might be like, oh sweet, it's going to fit my 10 gallon. Well, there's a reason why they're these ones that we sell are longer, and that's because the shorter they go, the worse they work as far as tumbling that media. So we're, I'm still testing that one from Zis that is a shorter one, and I just, it's not that it can't work, it takes a lot of air though. Like, I'm talking a lot, a lot. Way more than any of my other aquariums are running naturally, it takes a lot. And so, that would be my first thing. When you read the comments, people are like, didn't come with enough media, not tumbling well enough. Um, and then the suction cups, you can just tell they suck. Like, not in a good way. That was my biggest critique with uh, Zis when I had met them in China was, how do I get more suction cups? These suction cups in general always fail. I guarantee you, and I, I, I would challenge anyone 
that has bought us this filter to show me a suction cup with more suction power than those things. I swear it is like alien technology. So much so, it's a detriment. I tried to move one on my turtle tank the other day and it had me swearing. Like, are you kidding me right now? This is not okay. But I would rather have that the one time I need to move it than, oh, the suction cups went bad and now I can't find more. And I specifically, you know, I do my research. And I was reading through the questions people asked, you know, on the Amazon to ask about it. And they were asking, are there replacement suction cups? And they said, no, buy another one. So, you know, there is that. I haven't put my hands on it. I don't know if the plastics is thick and that kind of stuff. So, uh, but I have seen them, but I don't know uh, without, you know, I, I want to, that's, it's kind of like when I reviewed that Awaze cancer filter. Without physically using it, I'm sure I would find more pros and cons to it. This is purely from me having used similar products and analyzed products for a long time and then looking at it from the outside in and relying on other people's uh, info as well. But I'll probably order one, but right now if I order it, it's gonna get lost. And so I need to order it like a couple months from now, hopefully when I'm like, oh, there's a window of two weeks, I can test this thing. And uh, you know, if it's, if it's the bee's knees, don't worry, I'll tell you. But already, you know, you'd have to have a side-by-side -side comparison, I think. People are like, some people are like, oh, it's great. And it probably is if you've never seen one before, so. Yeah. All right. Keep on keeping on, my dude. I will keep on keeping on. Don White, the newest member. Welcome. Ooh, the employees. My, my wife says, sorry if I interrupted your live stream. Don't worry about it. You have not interrupted. We were on a break waiting to start when you were messaging me. I was uh, confirming some things. People were asking. Uh, my employees were asking, is it 10% off in the store as well? Yes, in the retail store, also 10% off. We're open normal hours today, so if you're local to us, you can get right in on in on that. Spend your uh, money, get 10% off, and walk out of there poorer than when you walked in. Yes. All right, we are actively working on burying our shipping team. This is also a stress test with all the new people, which is good to see. It's good to see what the amount of crew we have right now can handle so we can budget and forecast and that kind of stuff. I fully believe that Candy is probably overwhelmed with emails. There's probably a bunch rolling in asking about things and some of the employees have asked me to make sure that you know no offers are able to be combined. So like for instance, if we gave you a coupon because we made a mistake and said, hey, the next time you order is free shipping. There's no way our system only ever allows one code. So you can't combine that one time code you ever got plus the sale going on right now. It's just literally impossible on our system. So, you know, we already had one very angry customer that they couldn't combine things. And it's like, well, one, we're limited to it. And two, you know, we got to make some money. Uh, and then the other thing is we try to ask not to combine orders and do weird stuff like that. Like once there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of packages, we just physically can't dig through and find it. You know, I've, I've watched employees do it. I'm like, we have to stop doing that. I watched you. It took you 32 minutes to find it. And like that costs us so much in terms of trying to get packages out. We just have to kind of have this hard, fast rule of like, unfortunately, we can't combine packages with the way our system is currently set up. So, you know, we do realize that that is kind of an awkward thing. But, you know, we're trying to figure out a way we can properly address that uh, some of the things we are working, we've got some meetings planned, sneak a couple meetings in before I leave, and that is to meet with USPS. We are doing quite a bit of business with them. And one of the things to get cheaper shipping, which we're really hoping we qualify for, because it's getting out of control, is uh, separating all of the packages. And that would help in that instance. If every package got separated by uh, zone, I think is what they want, you know, so different zones based on how far away it is. At least then we could look up and like, okay, we need to combine this. Oh, they're in zone four. Go dig through that box where there's 60 packages instead of 260, right? Uh, so we're, we are looking into that and figuring out how can we, you know, work through this uh, difficult thing here. But, you know, one of those things I kind of always default to is like slow and steady wins that race. Make sure you're getting all you want. And someone earlier had some things in their cart and when they went to check out, they were already sold out. I realize in this weird scenario right now, it is grab and growl. But, um, you know, more plants will come, more things will come. You might not get the 10% off, but, you know, we really are not doing discounts very much anymore. Like this might be the first or second time in the entire year. And, 
Yeah, mostly I thought, you know what? I hadn't done any. It's been 300,000 subscribers. I want to give back a little bit. And even even my, you know, even Randy was like, have you run the numbers? Like, there's some items we will lose money shipping. And I'm like, yeah, there is that. But at the same time, how can I give back a little bit? And that's the only way I'd come up with, you know, other than, you know, obviously doing live streams and that kind of stuff. But I want to recognize the milestone. And we didn't do one on Wednesday because part of this whole bigger plans, basically Wednesday was crazy and there was just no way I could pull off doing a live stream. And so we didn't. And I, I feel bad about that, but we're making it up right now, hopefully, and uh, we'll dive in. So, been neglecting the chat for far too long. Scrolling to the bottom. All right. Um, a thousand people watching, only 80 likes. I would guess you're just lagging behind a little bit, but go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. How do I hide the chat? On a phone, there should be like a little arrow. Um, or just turn your phone the other way and it'll just be one big screen. But otherwise, yeah. <laughs> Someone says, shut up, Randy. No, we definitely need Randy. Randy. Randy has done more for you guys than you will ever know. With Randy coming on board, he has freed me up to uh, really do a lot more product research and we're gonna do an insane more traveling. And with that comes a lot more motivation of keeping Corey really interested in this hobby. And that's a good thing for everyone involved. When I can find new products, when I can reach more people, we can naturally bring the price down and that kind of stuff. And honestly, I just, I wanted to get away from the, the gimmicky sales tactics. So what I mean by that, and I'm fully guilty, fully guilty. Uh, a lot of times you have to entice people with like, you know, like Bed Bath & Beyond, like it's 20% off all the time, right? And there's a lot of online vendors, our competitors and that kind of stuff that we're doing that. And we were doing it too. We were forced to do that. Like, oh, if we don't show that we have a giant discount, just like they have a giant discount, but then we're all marking items up even more. So that way we take the discount. Like you, at the end of the day, you still have to make, you know, a profit on the item. If you're selling an item and you're losing money, you just go out of business. So it was just in causing everyone to inflate numbers and do all these weird things. And then you know, it was getting out of control. And so I, I, we wanted to go just to baseline pricing of like, look, this is just what it's going to cost. Like that's just, and when we can make it cheaper, we will. When it's got to go up, it'll have to go up. And, you know, you guys have seen what I've done over many years. And you know that I'm a guy that will speak my mind that gets me in trouble with manufacturers and that kind of stuff. And you'll see it be well for us. And you will know that the reality is when this thing's got to be $4.99, it just can't get cheaper. You know, this item right here that I want everyone to buy a million of is a nightmare for our business. And it's because it ships, it's such an odd shape. And I've told my employees like, don't fold it. We don't want that customer experience of them like getting this weird thing. Like it'll spring back together, don't worry. It will, but you know, we want to maintain that it looks good. You know, in, in a worst case scenario, fold it a little bit if we had to. But something like this, it's just so bulky that you know, when you order that kind of stuff, there, there, there are order combinations that just never work. You know, when you're like, oh yeah, we only charge $5 shipping and you bought two sponge filters and two plants, that will cost us $12.50 to ship it. No joke. $12.50 and that's just the postage. That doesn't count the three different employees that will touch those items. You'll have one picking the dry goods, you'll have one picking the plants, and you'll have one physically packing the package. And so, Three different people will touch that plus twelve dollars and fifty cents shipping. Meanwhile, you've spent about thirty dollars. And so, if we're doubling our money on products, so if we sell this for this, this is a bad example, but another sponge filter, we sell it for ten dollars, and we paid five dollars for it, and you buy two of those, so we spent ten dollars. And the plants, let's say we spent half on that, so we're at fifteen dollars plus twelve fifty shipping, right? And you spent thirty dollars. You can see, you're like, well, there's only $2.50 left there. Yeah, so we have to do lots of scale. And that's why, you know, as we scale up in our numbers, we can do that. The more things we touch and the more efficient we can do it, the more we can stay profitable. And Randy's really good at doing that on, you know, we'll invest our money here. We've got these crazy tape machines. We've got these crazy things. And we've got all this going on so that we can keep that price low for you guys. And then we can do battle and keep good products in, in stock, hopefully. So that's what we fight for. And so far it's working out, you know, not retiring by any means, but also not going out of business. So, 
Uh, Wesley says, I got my order for my birthday on s my order Saturday for my birthday. The fish love the new food. Awesome, Wesley. What food did you get? I suppose I could go back and look that up, but um, it was my birthday last Wednesday. No, last Sunday. When's my birthday? Yes, it was the 14th. Last Sunday was my birthday. And so I royally screwed up. And this is one of those things that I, I took the second half of uh, my birthday off. <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot to order plants. So plants got delayed by a day and I caused a big old hubbub in the entire operations of our stuff. And so we're definitely working on that. Once Randy, uh, he's having another baby. Once he kind of has that baby and gets settled back into the routine, we're going to handle or hand off uh, plant ordering to Randy so that I don't make any mistakes like that trying to take a half day once a year. So, you know, it is one of those things that I'm still working every day of every hour to make great things happen and uh yeah so I'm, i just hope i make it through these trips these trips are always a little bit brutal on myself on my wife on the crew it, it can be very difficult when you know when i'm out of pocket so to speak like oh something went wrong you know there's things that in business where it's like the only thing that can fix this is Corey's identification you know like oh a credit card got shut down and it handles this and only he can authorize it. And yes, we learned that. We put my wife on those accounts. But there's always something like, oh, geez, this thing is a nightmare right now. Also, Jimmy and uh, Lizzie, which is Jimmy's girlfriend, if you're watching, I stole one of your Reese's eggs. I had to steal it this morning. It was calling my name. And uh, yes, if you guys ever send a care package to the aquarium co-op, or fan mail, and you want to get me something, Reese's peanut butter cups are are my vice. <laughs> I love them. I don't buy them that often because I think they're a little, I think they're a little expensive for what they are. Like I'm a Snickers guy. Like if I need to, like I always travel. I mean, I'm a fat kid, right? I always travel on the plane now with a Snickers, and that's just because last year I got stuck on flights. When we were going, Joel and I were going to Germany and we were stuck for four hours without food or drink and it really sucked. So I, I made a rule that I will never get onto a plane without something to drink and a Snickers bar in case it goes wrong. And uh, so yeah, and I also got delayed when we were going to Peru and that's just my new thing. So uh, the Snickers for my money, when I got to eat, that's where it's at. You know, hungry? Well, I wait. What do we got from the fishy mail, man? So that was two days early for the sale, but thanks for the super low prices. I got five Crypt Parva, a Java Fern, Coral Moss, Phosphate Test Kit, Intake Sponge, and free shipping. Thanks to the team and Happy Easter. Yes. You know, so that, that is the thing is we hope that, yes, if you had ordered previously and you're like, oh, man, now it's cheaper. Like, we hope that the prices are so, like, reasonable that you don't even feel bad about it. That's That's my hope. Like, you know... This is literally like we're giving back to you because I, I made this kind of resolution in my mind of like if we're able to give a discount, we should just make the price lower. And so really we're just giving away like we're going to do a bunch of work is like, you know, what's the other way I could put this? It's almost like the employees and I go do a community cleanup project for like two days where we don't make any money. That's essentially what's going to kind of happen here. I mean, there will be a little bit of money because I, I, I doubt it's so thin on every single thing. We won't make any money, but, um, you know, the overall goal is a communal aspect here. Not so much like, Oh man, done getting rich and anything like that. But I do appreciate you guys ordering. And that's my goal. My goal is to take out the hesitation so that you see something you want, you order it up, you get it really fast. You get it great. If there's a problem, we take care of it and we move on to the next one, you know, and each customer we give the same attention to, and, uh, yeah. So I do appreciate that, the Fishy Mailman. You've been around a long time. I know I'm probably missing other Super Chats, but that one just stuck out. Grabbed my attention. What am I missing right now? All right. Just so you guys know, currently, the Packers are packing faster than you guys can order. They're on it. They're on it. Like, there's still, there's still a queue because there was packages from last night, but they are packing they have packed more than orders remaining currently, so they are on it. But what time is it? We're working towards lunch, so they'll get to have lunch, and maybe you guys can can beat them. All right. 
I know there's a button. No, that's what I was looking for. No, that's not it. Right here. All right, now I'm back to where I want to be. Uh, when you figure out shipping to Canada, I will be a big supporter willing to pay extra for shipping. Yes, so that was in a meeting last week. Um, and I, I posted a comment somewhere about it. Someone was asking about Canadian shipping. Uh, definitely in a meeting last week, we were talking about how do we want to launch in Canada? What products are eligible and make sense to put in Canada? And have we negotiated with like DHL and some other things? Like we're just, we really want to, we don't want to have a false start like we did a few years ago where it's like, it's here. Ah, oh, it turns out it's not here. My bad. Wrong. You know, so we really do want to do some stuff like that. And, um, we're working on it. It kind of needs a whole different team of people. You almost need like two other people to go, all right, you guys are responsible for Canada. And what I mean by that is like all the equipment here, you've got all the customs forms, you've got all that stuff ready to go. This, someone's going to drive it to this people because we won't be shipping it enough to have it picked up. And, uh, but right now we're training up people, you know, we're going to see who would be good to have that task and that type of thing. But it definitely is on the forefront of our mind because um, I was telling Randy before we launch too many more products, I want to look into, does it make sense yet? You know, and a lot of things, they just don't make sense yet is the key. So when we look at stuff, we go, Hmm, can this make sense? Like, no, we got to scale more. Right. And so like at a certain point when we can get cheaper shipping with USPS, whenever that day comes, hopefully it might be, make sense that we can now ship into Canada because we'll get a discounted rate. But the problem is like, like this thing right here, let's say you buy one of these. In the United States, if it was just one of these, it would cost us like three fifty, four bucks in shipping, postage, right? And we send it away. This same thing going 45 minutes north to Canada, so we're really close to Canada where we are. So 45 minutes north might cost me $22. Like that's the crazy part. And you know, there are people that are willing to pay and they're used to paying that shipping, but we also, what I know happens is we get a ton of um, people emailing like, why is shipping so crazy? Why is this going on? And we don't want to overwhelm candy. We need to add. So like to, to go into Canada, for instance, a couple things have to happen. One, we have to launch a sister website that would be aquariumcoop.ca. So there's that. Because we couldn't sell you plants because you wouldn't have the permits to import them. And there's other products that like... Uh, Phoenix and uh, Fluval Lights aren't rated to be sold in Canada, so we can't legally sell them to you. So we'd have to make this other website that has shared inventory, so that's its own logistical nightmare, and then would limit certain products that couldn't go to Canada. Then we would need a customer service person to handle all the Canadian orders so that when there is a problem or we need a certification to ship something or where's my package, all that kind of stuff, they're focusing on the Canadian side. And then, yes, we could physically pack it and ship it, assuming you were going to pay the price and all that. So it's, it's a lot more than just like, oh, we'll just start doing it. And that's what we learned the first time. The first time I thought, yeah, we can handle it. And it turns out there's so many just like little rabbit holes you start going down and just different payment providers and the way PayPal works. There's all these little caveats. We're just like, why is this different and more difficult? And it's just because it's another government. And so different rules to play by. And we want to make sure we want to make sure we're paying taxes correctly. We want to make sure all these things. So we have to pull in the bookkeeper, the tax accountant, the customer service rep, the people that are physically going to pack it. I've got to be in on it to make the new website. And we've got to do product selection and make sure we're declaring customs correctly. And so it is quite a bit of, um, you know, everyone coming together to make something happen. And we are actively working on it. We're, you know, I would say... If for every 20 steps we're taking in America, we're taking one step closer to Canada. And we're moving pretty fast. So I, I'm i hopeful, I'm hoping that by the end of the year, we might be able to start shipping some things to Canada. Even if it was only fulfilled by Amazon, that's my hope. Whether we'll get there or not, you know, there could be some technological nightmare that I don't know about yet that's going to prevent that. But it looks promising. So I hope to. Uh, am I any closer to getting snails again? Uh, truth be told, Megan Ness, we have not been working on that much. So there's other people selling them online. Uh, we've got some bigger things coming into play, so that might become a thing again. Like, we'll have enough storage space for them, but I still need to find a better way to ship them. Um, yeah, they were, the, it's the heat that gets to them. That's mostly, like, not so much cold, but heat. And 
we need to do a lot more education. So we get a lot of angry customers, if you will, that will say, my plants showed up cold, they're going to die. And the reality is, no, no, they're not. If they freeze, they will die. But pretty much nowhere right now it's freezing. And people are just assume because they're putting them into a tropical tank that if their plants are cold, they're suffering. It's actually the opposite. Most people don't realize that plants are used to much cooler temperatures than they are warmer temperatures. So when we look at plants, and this, cue up Jimmy right now, this is a snippet we should put out on the real fish talk slash aquarium co-op clips. Plants, like 90% of all the plants we put in our aquarium are marginal like terrarium plants. So what does that mean? That means they're growing on the side of a river, side of a lake, basically water levels coming up and down based on seasons, right? And so when nighttime temperatures come, we all know it gets colder at night, right? Well, water can hold temperature a bit better than air can. So when you have this, let's say, cryptocorn plant that half the year is outside of water, and when it gets cold, it goes much cooler than it will. It also goes much hotter at the same time. So it can handle these big swings in temperature if the sun's is beating down on it. Um, and we just think, oh, but it does so well at 78 degrees in our water. Like, yes, but truth be told, if we really want to make this plant happy, don't put it under water and keep it colder, right? You're going to get all the flowers out of it. You're going to make it do a bunch of cool things. So when we're shipping it, it's out of water. And yes, it's getting a little bit colder, but the reality is, as long as it doesn't freeze, it actually prefers to be cooler than it is hot. Hot is a problem. And so much so, I was explaining this to, into an email with a gentleman who, so we, we got some bad feedback that our plants aren't uniform. And while we were getting our award and we were in Florida, we actually met with farms, right? And so we want to see what challenges are you guys having that is causing us to have challenges. And one of the challenges is, based on season in Florida and in other countries that they're importing the plants, is how plants grow. So one of them is when you're in the middle of summer, it gets so hot that things like dwarf aquarium lilies and tiger lotuses just melt. You know, even with shade cloth and all that, they're like, we can't grow them. We can sell you bulbs, but we literally can't grow leaves because they just melt back. So that's one of them, right? Another one would be stuff like uh, Scarlet Temple and Water Sprite. When there's a lot of sun, they grow really compact and they'll start flowering early. So you can get a bunch of flowers on Scarlet Temple and then you get this real spindly, uh, fast-grown water sprite. Now, there's not a lot you can do. You can put some shade cloth and you can kind of help, and but daylight's always changing and that kind of stuff. And so the plant is still perfectly healthy. But if you order, what we're trying to explain to this person is if you order... Uh, in January and you order in July, those plants are just straight up going to be different because they would be naturally in the wild. Like it's not like just buying this. This is going to be the same both times, right? Same with a fish, that kind of stuff. And this person, you know, just was, was complaining that their plant seemed to be half as big as it was last time. And so we looked it up and last time they had bought the plant, it was like $7.99. This time was five or $4.99. So they were claiming as 50% as big. And I was like, well, you know, you did pay 30% less. And then every plant we do have says there is going to be variation because it is a live good and we can't directly control it ourselves. Uh, you know, so I was like, you know, we can refund your money and you can shop elsewhere. That is a valid thing. But, you know, they were saying we well, really need to get your product standardized. And I had to go through this whole spiel of like, I would, except it's impossible for this industry. Like it just, you know, is not not something we can 100% control in a large capacity like that. So all we can do is try to sell healthy plants and keep them roughly your expectations as close to reasonable as we can. You know, we always, so a lot of times what you'll see, like if you look at our mosses right now, we took the mosses the first day we got them, took the pictures, boom. And so like, I think it's a coral moss, looks pretty crappy. But that's because when you get it, I want it to look better. I don't want to show you like, here's what coral moss looks when it's, you know, grown out for three months and looks amazing. And then when you order it, you're like, this thing doesn't look so good, right? I would much rather over deliver than under deliver. And we, we always try to do that. And so that's where we're at with, uh, what, what was the original question was something like, uh, oh, we're going to get snails again and that kind of stuff. And we just want to make sure that we can deliver and keep everything healthy and happy. You know, it gets really weird when, you know, You've got snails, you've got plants, you've got dry goods, you've got liquids. Like th That's how you, when you ship, you have to think of all those as different things. So a live kind of animal is different than a plant. 
and a plant is different than a dry good, so different than something like this, and then a liquid is different than that. So like this has to get bagged, this doesn't have to get bagged, the, the snails have, we gotta make sure they don't get crushed, and then the plants gotta make sure they don't get crushed, but they also stay wet, you know? So you've got these weird things of like, oh, if this is too heavy, it's gonna crush a snail shell, or it's gonna do a thing. Oh, we gotta put heat packs in, we gotta make sure that stays far enough away, but not too far away, so they get too cold. And it's another wrinkle in our system that, you know, we might bring it back and then, like, sometimes what we'll do is like, snails only ship separately. So we could be like, yep, snails are 30 bucks. And people are like, wow, you are way too expensive on snails. We're like, yes, but we only ship snails solo and we've gotten it. So uh, they're perfect. We were having, I think it was a 5%, was it 5% like DOA rate. And for as far as I'm concerned, snails, that was too high. Like we just, it, it's not good when five out of 100 people are receiving death. And so what I'm always afraid of is those are the five people that are telling me. What if there's another five people that don't tell me? So we're actually at 10%. Like that's not a good thing. So we, when we see weaknesses in what we're doing, we try to A, fix it. We can't fix it. Take it off the market until we figure out the best idea. And right now, you know, I just haven't put attention to it. But, you know, I'm hoping once Dean – uh I'm trying to get Dean to come aboard. He's really good at figuring that kind of stuff out. So I'm hoping someday, you know, if it's not this year, maybe next year, that I can get Dean on board and be like, all right, let's figure out shipping snails. What's the best thing you got? What should we do? Where do you think the crux is here? And uh, part of it is I do need to develop a campaign with snails so that when you order snails, like a PDF gets sent to you with a, and a video, like read about how these things need to be landed, read about care of snails and all that. And uh, that will take care of maybe 20% of the problem, you know, so. All right, where are we at? What's the best way to dose Easy Green and Easy Iron in a five gallon planter tank? Uh, love your videos. I would use a pipette. Uh, I don't have any here, but we sell them for like a buck. And basically one milliliter treats one or 10 gallons. So you'd want to use half a milliliter to treat your five gallon. Um, you could get a, a much smaller graduated pipette and maybe you're like, oh, I'm dosing, you know, what would that be? Like 0.2 of an ml every day. Is that right? No, it'd be half an ml split over seven days. So it'd be, yeah, it'd be like half, I don't even know, one tenth of an ml. No, it'd be like one twentieth of an ml every day. So it, it gets hard, but I would just stick to like once a week, um, uh, with something like that. So, uh, that being said, I do believe we're going to discontinue the nano easy green going forward. So we might bring in a couple more times, but it is on the, we need to phase this out plan. Our goal is to make easy green cheaper a little bit again. And part of that is going to be buying um, pump heads and bottles in crazy massive bulk. And the way the, so easy green nano operates, I believe under two milliliters or wait, one milliliter per gallon, but a different size bottle. And they're like, it's its own logistics. And so to get the price down on all of Easy Green, which Easy Green Nano is like 1% of Easy Green sales. So we get to bring the price down on 99% of the sales by alleviating 1%. It's kind of a great thing for most people, but there will be some people that will feel slighted like, hey, you got rid of what I like to use. And uh, so that's that betterment of everyone type of deal, unfortunately. I was hesitant to bring on Nano at the very beginning years ago and because I thought, ah, oh, it's more more stuff we got to carry. And kind of turns out, um, yeah, that's the way it did work out. So um, Justin says, I did a 45% water change and half my fish died. Uh, you can run into a few problems there. One, there could have been a lot of chlorine, could have been a water temperature difference, could be not enough oxygen. Now that could happen where the water coming in doesn't have a lot of oxygen, but what people don't know is a lot of things like Prime and, I don't think I have it, but Complete and Ultimate and that kind of stuff, when they break down uh, chlorine and chloramines, they use up a lot of gases or a lot of oxygen to do that. And so we really wanna make sure that we're aerating the water that goes back into an aquarium. We wanna make sure we've got an air stone running, which that is, I want on my tombstone when I die, everyone needs an air stone. Just like, please, everyone get an air stone. I'm, I'm making it as easy as I can. An $8 USB air pump that is awesome and super quiet, which by the way, read the reviews. Everyone is shocked how quiet this thing is, which is good because everyone likes quiet air pump. 
But that's if that's the one thing I could pass along, someone remind me and call me out on it next time someone's like, what's the one piece of advice you'd give to a new person? 100% run an airstone. Like that just, so much is accomplished with one airstone. Like the amount of money involved is minimal. The amount of maintenance, minimal. Impact, huge. Huge amount of impact. And so much so when you see a lot of... Um, you know, let's say third world countries with fish and that kind of stuff at fish farms, they might not have anything else going for them, but they've got air. Like that's just one of those like universal minimal requirements of like the benefit is so good compared to what it costs. Uh, and I know you're going to see, you're going to see the contrary to that with uh, the Goliad farm because he's running uh, lots of water. And so he decided because he has so many hurricanes and stuff like that, it was easier to run multiple water pumps and spend more in power and get more water running because they they go through the power surges and the hurricanes better for him. The big blowers that he had to use to run those um, those greenhouses were having problems when the power would surge or just go out. Like they were really hard to get going up on the generators and stuff. So you're going to be like, oh, look at this guy doing exactly the opposite of what Corey's recommending. But do know that his entire career up until about – you know, eight months ago, he ran Airstones for like the last 30 years. So, and now that he's like trying to make a tornado proof system is why he's going away from it and just going to sheer water movement. So, and, but he does have it spraying and splashing. Like you'll see it, like it's, it's definitely aerating that water. You know, it'd be like having a cancer filter, just shooting the water from three feet above your tank into it and making a mess on your floor. Like that's the level of aeration going on there. So, all right, let me hop back into regular checks i've been neglecting you guys for way too long way too long i have a planet tank with a placat beta neon tetras bronze quarries i would love oh no i would like an easy to cultivate food that i can do indoors that will feed the tank uh e littles and get yourself some scuds you can order them from goliad farms you can probably get them on aquabid those are the two that i kind of know and uh yeah paul martin says Four hours. Ordered at 8 a.m. Got a confirmation package label for delivery. 12 p.m. Same day. Your team really rocks. Yes. So typically we start uh, packing at 7 a.m. And so people start getting orders ready. Then the rest of the team shows up at 8. And then we'll start packing nonstop till about, well, until mail pickup happens. And that's usually around 4 o'clock. And so we get as many packages as we can every day. My My mantra in my life is why put off what you can do today till tomorrow because there's a whole new set of challenges tomorrow we don't know if there's 500 packages to go out tomorrow we don't know if the internet's going to be down we don't know if they're going to forget to pick up we don't know we don't know what tomorrow's challenge brings so let's get as much as we can done today so that we can make tomorrow easier I think your position on airstones makes so much sense. Plant farms will produce immersed plants and all wait. Plant farms will produce immersed plants and all you are saying to do is take the air and pump it into the water. Makes sense to me. Yes, that's I mean, a lot of people say that oh, my thing will do a thing, my thing will do a thing. I can get it this way and I'm not saying you can't accomplish oxygenated water in other ways. I'm just saying there are so many benefits to an airstone, especially like here. The reason I went with USB is I can at least convince you that if the power goes out, you can keep your fish alive with this, like at least that. So sometimes you have to trick, you know, a horse to drink the water. You know, it's like, trust me, you really need that water. You really need it. And if I trick you into this other thing and uh, yeah, so Kang Bang says, I got an Eheim pump from Corey's review. A bit noisy than I thought. All good, though. Yes, now I have a proper dB meter. So I can just, like, back then, which was probably three or four years ago, I only had a cell phone technology dB meter, and it was as good as that can get. I learned since then. We turned off all the power except for one little bank of power in the studio and got it as quiet as, po as possible. Our noise floor in the studio at that point was 34. Let's see what it is in here. Door 50. It's a lot louder in here than it is in that studio when we turn off all the power. And I wanted to get as low as I could 
so that we could legitimately see how loud these things were. And, uh, you know, so just as I can afford better equipment, you know, as you guys buy stuff, I buy more gadgets that, you know, it probably doesn't make sense for all of you guys to own one of these to measure your air pumps once ever in your life. But if I can do it once and then show 50,000 people, we've scaled that quite well. So, yeah. So unfortunately, it's a little louder than you liked. Um, I do like how it's controllable and all that, but yeah. That being said, I didn't. That pump didn't exist back when I was reviewing the Eheim. So, yes. Water store. Water energy has 4.23 times the storage of air. I know that that is way above my head when I tried to. Uh, put my brain around thermal transfer of pumping hot air into water. What would the retention rate be if I had a top and all that? And it, it came out basically that I have no idea. That's what it came out to be like. Yep, no idea. So something wrong with the Murphy camera. I watched them sometimes the last week or so, just a black screen. I checked my settings, nothing so far. So I do know that yesterday uh, some water got spilled onto the plug and so they unplugged it but I think it should be up and going now. I'm going to check right here while we're live. So if you're wondering what we're talking about, there is a camera on Murphy 24 hours a day that is live that shows Murphy's tank. And if you scroll to the bottom of the page, it's under links, live puffer camera, and I'm clicking on it. It is, well, it is just black for me at the exact moment. So I don't know. There could be a legitimate problem going on with it. I can look at it later today. It should not just be showing black, though. We're open at the store. Yes, I don't know. Let me check one more. I keep meaning to replace that camera with a, a slightly better camera, just so it's a little bit crispier picture. But it's on my list of things to do that don't generate me any money, slash got to remember to do it. And cost me money. The cameras are like 250 bucks that I want. Okay, so it is showing on the back end. So I wonder if it's a privacy setting somehow got changed. Let me see if I can see um, push notifications, email, motion people, nest aware. We got on high quality, night vision's off. Camera sharing. Murphy camera is shared publicly. Yes. Yeah. So, all I know is I could try to monkey with it later today and see if I can't get that to be better working. It could also be one of those crazy things sometimes, like a Google update will come out on Chrome or. Yeah. So if I'm watching it right now. Someone's playing with the camera right now. So, I, I, I promise you they're like listening to this live stream going, well, it should be working. Corey. Uh oh, Corey's saying it's not working. All right, it's working now. So maybe it just got replugged in. I don't know. Uh oh, I don't know. It's it's on. Hopefully it gets figured out. That's all I know. We're working on it. That's what we know. Help. Uh, when will you have fry food back in stock? Uh, Bare Bottoms Aquariums. We have more on the way. We had some recently. If we're sold out right now, that means we're sold out of the sale. So. The answer I can tell you is I have no idea other than I expect within the next two weeks. It could be tomorrow, though, because I know we should have some on the way. Yes. Uh, let's see. Have I ever thought about putting a submerged camera in Murphy's tank? Uh, yes, I have. The logistics are not the easiest. Remember that you have to co supply constant power while underwater and a constant like USB or Wi-Fi feed. So... Those capabilities exist. They're also crazy expensive. So yes, I have considered that. Uh, how many goldfish can I keep in my 60-gallon tank? I would say between two or three if they're fancies. Yes. Do I have to worry about using easy carbon at half dose when I have jungle val? Will it be effective at a half dose? So if you're trying to kill algae... It is slightly effective, but part of the problem is at half dose, like I'm just against half dosing anything, you know, like it's kind of like, oh, you're allergic to flour. What if you use half a flour? Like, no, that just, it's going to make a bad tasting cake and it's not going to turn out right. Like, and you're still going to be allergic to it. Kind of the same thing with, with easy carbon, 
you know, yes, will half dose kill the jungle bell? Probably not. Is it going to be super effective against the algae? Probably not. You know, so it's that whole like, hmm, yeah. What's Lamont up to? I just talked to him through Instagram the other day. Still just keeping a baby. That's what he's doing, raising his, his uh, son. And uh, yeah, just kind of keeping on, doing what he's doing. A few favorite non-live betta foods. Uh, I personally really like the Addison's betta pellets. So I like that food. Um, I like freeze-dried Hikari bloodworms quite a bit. And I have any others that I like, really love. I mean, there's other foods that are like, yeah, they'll eat it. I'm trying to think of stuff where I'm like, oh, they go bananas for that. And it's non-live because I, I spoil them with live food. I think I feel like those are the two. I feel like anything else, I'm going to be reaching for straws and not feel that passionate about it. Those two, I feel passionate about. So, uh, let's see. Caleb just submitted an order. Well, thank you. Those that are new to the stream, use the code 300K to get 10% off everything today only. It's today only. I don't want to hear whining about tomorrow on how like, oh, I didn't order. Oh, like it's it's just today. That's it. That's it. It's today only. One day only. One day. Today only. Only one day. Not tomorrow. Today. One day. Only today. I can hear Jimmy like crawling around out there. Only today. <laughs> yeah, he's, Jimmy says only today. <laughs> I think Jimmy is out to shoot a video. Oh, he might be doing the 800 gallon today. He asked me if he could shoot the 800 gallon. Which, by the way, ooh, should I plug your contest, Jimmy? Uh, All right, I'm going to plug his contest. So Jimmy Jimmy's trying to win a 100-gallon aquarium from, like, custom aquariums for when he moves back to Ohio. And he, he as he conveyed to me yesterday, he's like, you know, I, for, I forget how awesome the 800 gallon is because we're sitting next to it all day long, and I want to have something kind of big and cool where I end up in Ohio. And so there's... He did a video, right? Like a custom aquariums at Aquashella had a thing where if you did a video about them, then like all those people get entered and whoever gets the most votes gets a uh, 100 gallon aquarium by them. So if you want to help Jimmy win, which there's other creators as well, you know, I don't want to pretend like other people didn't make videos, but if you specifically want to help Jimmy get like a 100 gallon aquarium for where he shows up, uh, you can look for that Facebook post on custom aquariums. Uh, Facebook and I think he is number three so out of the list he's number three you either put Swiski or number three to give him a vote and I voted for him because I would like to see him have a good aquarium that way I can come and film it when I come to visit and uh, so yeah if you want to help out this is one of those things where probably the amount of people in chat if you actually went and did that you would just like seal the deal so hard no one else could compete so I realize Facebook I hate it I'd have to alt tab I might even have to shut this down, get into Facebook app, and click a like button. That'd be terrible. But you could make a huge difference for Jimmy, and it costs you nothing. Like, it's going to cost you 37 seconds of your time. Gets Jimmy a uh, 100-gallon aquarium, which is pretty cool. Like, I did it. You know, I took my time to go do it. So I recommend you do it as well. All right. So my wife, who's listening to the live stream, says, we have some fry food in stock. If they want bulk, I'm making some right now. We put 10 more into stock just now. So if you're looking for that fry food, order it up. Remember the rules. We're not combining shipping. We're not going to go dig for your package, any of that. But my team of people, my wife included, are doing everything possible to make you guys happy right now. So... You know, give them a little leeway. Don't make my wife go bag fry food and then dig through a couple hundred packages to combine those. Like, just go, all right, yep, I'm going to get 10% off. I'll order. Hopefully, you guys just place a billion $70 orders. You know, just keep dropping that money. And we don't have to combine, right? Like, oh. So, unreasonable, I know. But, so yes, go vote for Jimmy. All right, I lost my chat. I'm, I'm looking for it. We're back. All right. I'm sure like a mod will have uh, a mod will have the link for that. Jimmy's flying the coop. Nah, he's not. Well, he's he's moving to Ohio, but that's just so we can have uh, Aquarium Co-op West and Aquarium Co-op East. What? 
No, we get a home base over there and we're gonna we're gonna film a lot more. So kind of one of the reasons we're doing outside of United States filming is once he has his home base there, I can fly into Ohio, we can use a vehicle and we can drive to so many great fish rooms and all that kind of stuff locally. So that's part of the part of the plan, if you will. Part of the plan. Yeah, so Robert, store manager, is confirming. He says, weird, Murphy Cam isn't working on my phone even right now. So, yes, there's probably some crazy privacy setting or I just got to buy a new camera. And this will be, this will actually make me do it. So, yeah. All right, got to find the chat again. Do sponge filters have to be sitting on the bottom of a tank to work? Can you use multiple small sponge filters to equal a larger one? Thanks for the inspiration. Yes, you can use multiple small ones, and they do not have to be on the bottom at all. In fact, Jimmy's uh, trolls me on the daily by having a sponge filter float in his rainbow fish tank, and it drives me insane. But it 100% – he's laughing over there right now. He hears me. 100% uh, will work just absolutely fine. Uh, it changes the circulation a little bit, but it's such a, it's such a non-issue. Don't even worry about that aspect of it. And, yes, you could use – Lots of small ones hidden behind decor and all that. It's it's all about surface area. So whether you have, so like this sponge filter, right? We've got one right here. This right here, right? So that is a giant sponge filter. It's the same if it's just two sponge filters. Same amount of surface area. So there are some extreme examples where, you know, if you only had one uplift tube, and you've got five sponges, there can only be so much draw. And if you had five airline tubings, that would technically be more efficient. But we're really getting into craziness here. Just, just go with, yes, it will totally work. You can hang them. You don't have to have them sitting on the bottom. You can have a million little ones. It's just surface area. If they all add up to the same thing, yes, it's going to work for you. We got new members joining up. Nugget the Puffer. You're my new best friend. Nugget the Puffer. I love that name. Love it. Nugget. 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 Nugget the Puffer. And we've got Black Sheep Model Works. Welcome. Michael Larson just voted for Jimmy. Hope you get the tank. Yes. Don't put off buying a camera today. You never know what problems will happen tomorrow. I know, Ross. I know. The only reason I'm putting it off is I feel like the most current camera that we use from that camera service is like 18 months old. I know they're going to put out another one. Like they can't not put out a better one. And once they put out that better one, I just want that one. This is the oldest camera I own, by the way. It was the first thing I, uh, I ordered for the store. Like I ordered that camera. That camera is, it's gotta be over six years old. Cause I installed it before we even opened. So yeah. All right. Ever plan on bre on being co-op? Okay. Ever plan on being co-op to Arizona? So I'm guessing bringing. The odds are low, uh, but maybe there there's an event, Pet Fest, in Arizona. It's a one day event. I'm on the fence. Like I could go. What I'm worried is I'm going to show up to Pet Fest and everyone's going to be like, "Who's this guy?" Like, uh, we don't do fish. And then it's kind of a waste of time. Like, I could fly and go visit someone's fish room or something. So I haven't committed to it by any means. But it's also like, well, it's relatively close. Tickets to Arizona are cheap. But then you factor in a hotel room. And then the problem is with a one-day event. Okay, let me, let me back this up. Here's my logic. I could go speak to a club anywhere in the country. And I got to fly in the day before. And I pretty much fly out the day after. So it's a three-day event for me. My life gets interrupted by three days. I can go to Pet Fest. Also a three-day event, basically. Like, oh, I have to fly in a day, stay in a hotel, work the whole day, you know, at the show, stay at a hotel, fly out the next morning, probably. You know, yeah, you can do it like, oh, you're flying out that night, but that gets its own logistical nightmare of, like, getting the right flight after the show ends and making it on time and doing all that and feeling rushed. So I'm worried that, like, I fly to Arizona, shake hands with, like, three fans and be like, dang it, should have went to... Colorado and spoke to oh, 50 people, right? Or something like that. So that's why I haven't committed to it yet, but there's a chance. There's a chance. Yes. 
Is there somewhere on my website that lists filter sponge sizes for Aquaclear filters? I'm trying to find the correct size for an Aquaclear 30 and a 50. Uh, no, there's nothing on our website, but basically everything 50 and under uses the medium pre-filter sponge. 70 and up uses the large. And then if you're looking for interior, everything uses this sponge pad. And I, I did a whole video on filters are always changing. There's no way we can keep up. So you kind of just have to trial and error. Like that's just the way it's got to be. So. All right. Can you keep tropical plants in the pond? Yes. Uh, I've got outside right now, we've got uh, guppy grass, dwarf sagittaria, hornwort, duckweed. I think that's about it. But yes, you can do more than that too. Welcome, Diesel Weasel. I like that. Diesel Weasel. Psychotic Aquatics. Thank you for the shout out or the three or the ten. A brain can't. I'm trying to. I'm trying to formulate what I'm going to say about Psychotic Aquatics, which ruined what I was saying. It was a great job on 300K. Thank you for that. What I was trying to say is. Uh, Psychotic Aquatics is building a rad fish room and breeding some fish, and I've been following what he's been doing uh, on Facebook, so I'm enjoying that. That's what I was trying to like get ready in my head. A lot of times, people don't realize like this skill set you have to have is you have to be reading and preparing your response while you're reading the question. Otherwise, there's way too much lag time, which you probably have noticed in some uh, live stream YouTubers where you know like the the thing I personally hate. I personally hate live streams where it's just reading the chat, like. Oh, tech turtle at tech turtles at family dinner watching the replay later. And then you've got like, oh, the fish room recommendations in Chicago and surrounds. Or yeah. So like I like to you know not just read the chat because I feel like we could all just read the chat if we wanted to. And so I like to hopefully formulate some kind of intelligent response. And sometimes those brain waves get crossed and I, I that's what happened there with psychotic aquatics. Am I bad? All right. What's once in a lifetime? Well, it's only the only time I'm going to hit 300,000 subscribers. I uh, take it, I don't take it for granted that YouTube can make an algorithm change and this is as big as we'll ever get. Every day, I, I talk about that with other creators and um, employees and that kind of stuff. Like, we got to get while the getting's good because there could be an algorithm shift, there could be something that happens that makes it so that we are not viable anymore. And what I mean by viable is not like in the public eye. And so every day, that's why I work so hard every day is like tomorrow could be the start of my vacation. Like, oh, they made a shift and I'll never be seen again. And it's only corporate America, Jimmy Fallon and all that. Like already the trending page has been dominated for so long. Individual YouTubers like us have very few chances. Um, but, you know, as they change things, yes, uh, could go that way. So we try to do what we can. So we're hoping we hit to 500K or a million or whatever you want to call it. We're hoping, but, you know, we take it one day at a time. You know, right now we're at 300,604. What I do know is 62% of you don't subscribe to the channel. So there's that. And the more of you that subscribe and the more of you that become a member, the more emojis we can make. And... In 2019, pretty much emojis make the world go round. So, alrighty, we do. Oh, Nightbot finally kicked back in. Nightbot has been slacking lately. I'm glad to see it's working. I really want one of those neon tetra lights. Where did I get mine? Oh, I, I can never get this right. I think I'm smart every time. That one right there. That came from eBay, and they shipped it direct from China. It took like three months to get here. I honestly thought it was never coming. But yeah, I think it was like 60 bucks for my neon, neon Tetra. I hope everyone appreciates the irony there, because I certainly do, and I think it's hilarious. So, yes. There's probably cool stuff you guys don't get to see very often back here. Like, I always forget... So, like, Jimmy got this for Christmas, I think, two years ago. Has it been two years? Probably. It probably has. Like, most of you have probably never seen the Mabu Puffer hand-blown glass fish. And I say most of you because in the last two years, we've grown so much that 
a majority you probably have never seen this. And I just think it's super cool. So it sits on my shelf. And Jimmy went through a lot of trouble to get this for me. Had it made. What else do we have? We have kind of cool things. This is a Sarah cup that I demanded. I get one a little like a uh, little, oh, top of the morning to you type of set. And uh, when we were in Germany, kind of a little memento. I was like, I will put that somewhere. And then this Dean found for me, it's this like felt made uh, puffer ornament. And I thought it fit in that cup reasonably well, so it stays and lives there. What else do I have? Everything super cool? Probably not. And this is probably on screen all the time though. Oh, someone even put the little anti or the sticky stuff. This we got on our trip to Japan. This was before we were on YouTube. Even well, I think we were on YouTube, but I knew like, oh, I'm gonna come back to YouTube, and uh, so we filmed some of the stores and stuff. But this was a memento. It's still supposed to go. I mean, my wife and I had this idea: if we collect a decoration every time we go somewhere, we could have this like super cheesy but awesome aquarium that had all these little memories without ever turning off. So, well, that's that longevity test for you. Is it true that CO2 boosters can actually melt certain plants? Uh, yes, it would be true that like Easy Carbon, CO2 booster, Cyclic Cell, or not Cyclic, uh, Chem Excel could melt some plants down, yes. Uh, oh, I've got to play the Halloween one. I don't think it's plugged in. Oh, is it battery operated? So I've got, let's see, is it right here? Yeah. Hopefully it turns off. There we go. Yeah, so a little stuff like that, but I didn't have a good spot to fit it on my shelf, so. I kind of want to make something like this someday. This is a super cool, I think it's super cool, vintage ornament. So this would be in your aquarium, and you put... An air stone in the back of it you just put the air stone down in it right and then the top looks like it has bubbles coming out so you got a guy at the bottom of your tank I think this kind of stuff is super cool like the the plasticky stuff and just I kind of like the super duper retro uh, I guess ornaments I think they're so old and like iconic that it makes them cool like the, a lot of them were made in Japan I don't know if this one has any stamps on it or anything but I like to keep that stuff around too. And I always like this guy up here. This guy, kind of the same concept. You put your air stone or your airline in the back of his head. So he's you know, down there breathing. And then he'd have bubbles coming up and he's got an ax apparently. Cause that's what you bring when you scuba dive and you fight like, I think it's like a moray eel or something. And uh, yeah, this one's made in Japan as you can s maybe see someday. Nope, it's locked on my head. Dang you, there we go. Yeah, so kind of this old school ornaments that, yeah, I think are cool. Probably break in shipping nowadays, but I kind of collect this little stuff just because I think it's neat. Well, I have the big fish too. There's other stuff you guys haven't seen probably, like the big fish. This guy right here too. He does a thing, I think. Yeah, he does, he moves. Tell me that wouldn't drive you nuts. Oh, you can turn it on and off though. Yeah, we're gonna turn that off. Yes, lots of cool. I can show you all kinds of stuff. What's this thing right over here? Covered in spider webs, but cool little discus made out of wood. I collect all the trinkets I ever can. I spent way too much money on a lot of this stuff because I know it's a one of type of piece, so. All right, Mike says, I had an idea that I should send you and your employees some Swedish candy. I can guarantee you they wouldn't turn it down. Yes. Uh, I, will, I will point out, so if you're going to send us candy, I do love Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. I'm going to point that out. Two, we have at least two employees that are kind of like gluten-free and that kind of stuff. So if you can, I feel, I already feel like I can't even... I feel bad for even asking. I'm just saying if you really want to make everyone happy, send some choices 
Because we get a lot of stuff like that. And then, like, poor Robert and uh, Jordan are always left out of, like, oh, I don't get any. You know, so if you're, like, the world's best gluten-free baker and that kind of stuff, like, that might be a thing. Um, my wife does try to make up for that. And we do a lot to make sure we take care of all of our employees. You know, so we'll do special lunches and that kind of stuff where we can. But I always just feel bad when we're like, look at all this candy. You guys can't have any because you'll die. That sucks. So... Yes. All right. Did my local club reach out to you after hearing my rant about the lack of supporting local stores? Uh, one person on the board did reach out, and they said they basically do a lot for it, and I was like, no, no, you don't. And then they were kind of like, yeah, you're kind of right. That's kind of how it went down. Like, I didn't want to raise it to be a bigger issue, but it it's kind of like there's so much you can do that when someone says you're not doing very much and you're like, no, we're doing a thousand percent. Like when someone says, Corium Co-op, you could do more for the industry. And I'm like, no, you can't. The reality is, yes, you can. I could do way more. Like if my whole goal was just to like, at all costs, do more, I could do more, right? But I'm, I'm trying, like I myself, taking a long-term approach, sort of a quick term, but I could do some crazy stuff in the next month. Might not be sustainable, but I could do it. And so, you know, I just think that there's always room for every business, every organization, everything to grow. And when you get criticized, it's, you know, there's two responses. One, fight back and say, how dare you? Another response is, cool, how do you want to help us pull this off? Right? So there's two ways to go about that. You know, I would just, I would say in my personal opinion that there are things that should be changed. Like if you're a local speaker, so let's say we have Dean give a talk at our local club or Lawrence Kent, or myself, or lot, there's a lot of, we have a lot of good speakers locally that fly all around the country and get, you know, their flight paid for and all that to go speak. If you speak at our club and you're a local, you get one year free membership or dinner. Not both, or. If you fly into our club, you get a free year membership and you get dinner and your flight paid and you get shown around for a few days and do events. So it's one of those like, I think we could we could give dinner and that you know, and they're they're moving towards it, but I just think it's crazy. I think it's crazy that that is how strict we're being in as a club. So, yeah. Uh, any employee? Oh wait, an employee went out of their way for me just last week to help my daughter that got her finger stuck. Uh oh. If I dr okay, so it must be in the store you got finger stuck. If I dropped off coffee beans, would your store use it? Do you have a coffee machine grinder, machine or grinder? Uh, we only do instant coffee at the store. That being said, I'm sure most employees would take some home. I know uh, Robert is an avid coffee guy, and uh, there's a few other people that really love, like Jimmy really loves coffee, but we provide uh, a lot of the, what is it, like, Korean coffees, instant coffees, that stuff, just to make it easy for employees because everyone's kind of got the way they like their coffee and, and uh, you know, oh, I need this much cream, right? Like a dark roast, like a light roast, I like this. And so it's like, well, just add hot water. Just add the hot water and pick your blend. Good to go. So welcome, Brian G, to the membership team. Yeah. All right. All my fish died and their eyes are white. What happened? That is a can of worms. Could be a million different things, Wendy. Uh, typically, when everything dies, it's an environmental factor, meaning that something was wrong with the water. Now, if they died over the course of like a week, could have been a disease running through them. But look at water. Look at pH. Look at hardness. Look at ammonia, nitrite, nitrate. If those all check out right, then we can do some more digging. So... I have a real wood root piece that I put in my tank. I've drilled a handful of one-inch holes in it. It's been there for almost a month, weighed down with a couple of rocks. It still floats. How can I make it sink? Time, that's all you can do. Let it sit there for time. You know, you could screw it to like a weighted slate base and that'll sink it, but some take years to go down. So, yep. I need to clear up a garden pond. What do I do? Uh, UV sterilizer would be my recommendation. Do a couple water changes maybe beforehand. Get a UV sterilizer on there. Kill that green water off. We were just showing my green water pond yesterday. 
and I've already got the two 36 watt UV bulbs I'm going to replace so that they can take care of that. But uh, yeah, I'm doing a live stream today, so it won't be happening today. It's getting hot in here. I guess it's only 75 so far. Seachem Metro and General Cure are not healing my fish's hexamida. Any tips? Uh, so make sure that it's not. I personally find most people run into hexamida, which is lateral line disease, that kind of stuff. I find that they're actually running into uh, nutrient deficiencies, not so much the parasite. I would try using some Vitachem or basically a well, well-rounded diet, but I use Vitachem myself. Get a lot of vitamins in there and see if uh, that doesn't help fix that. Wow. I haven't had a monster in like weeks, weeks and weeks. That'll wake you up. Who's ready to work? I'm ready to work. You guys ready to work? Let's work, 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 work. Four emerald corridors and a 10 gallon? Yes, you could do that. I saw you at the aquatic experience last year. Uh, what fish expos are you going to this year? Asks Charles. Uh, the ones that I know that I am confirmed for would be aquatic experience this year. Uh, would be Aquashella Chicago. I'll be there. I don't know the ones in Europe yet. I believe Vivarium. And I know well, I'm, I'm going to SIPS, which is Chinese International Pet Expo. But I won't be an exhibitor there. I'll be walking around. I think there's like three or four of them in Europe, though, that I'll be at. So... Um, and so here's what I say. The minute someone makes a Facebook event, I add it to our Facebook group. I know Facebook's the devil. You don't want to be there. I get it. Right. But that is the best place for us to keep events. And so we do keep events there. So like right now there is AGA on there and there might be one more, maybe not though. But the minute they, uh, the minute they make a Facebook group, I add it there so you guys can stay privy to it. So AGA 2019 auction. I don't know if I'll be there with the auction. Part of the problem I have is, um, so I have to exhibit there. So I got to be in the vendor room Friday and Saturday. I have to give a talk probably on Saturday, um, which by the way, I need to make that talk. But so I've got all that going on. And then Sunday, I, I have to like tear down Saturday night. But the problem is there's other YouTubers like in town and collectively all of them want to do something. So it's... And we already established my schedules like four days later. I basically fly out for like a, an entire month. So I'm scrambling to get everything ready. Meanwhile, people want to film my store. They want to do different things. And so I don't know if I'll be at the plant auction on Sunday the whole time or not. Um, or at all. Remains to be seen. But I know like Lucas Brett's going to be there. Joel will be there. Corpus Oskin. Jimmy will be there. Like over the weekend. Uh, Sean from Fritz Aquatics is coming in. Um, who else do I know is coming in? Aquapro is coming in for Friday night, I believe. Um, uh, Tazawa's Tanks is coming. Uh, Tank Tested is coming. Um, there's probably more off the top of my head I'm just forgetting right now, but there's more, yeah. Robert says, are you kidding me? Vivarium? That's in Holland. Yes, so as far as I know, we're going to Vivarium in Holland, yes. I think there's another event in the Netherlands, which for all my ignorance, it could be there. And there's a couple more events in Europe that we're going to. Um, basically, the Shrimp King and I are teaming up to do all these events and these traveling trips together because it's just easier when you've got someone watching your back when you're in in you know in the wild and you're in a foreign country and you're like oh watch the booth while i go to the bathroom i'm going to grab something to eat you want something we can share a hotel room all those things so yeah going back to china i believe it's in november this year it's gonna be in shanghai so yes i do plan to go back uh which i'm excited because it'll be a new place and new market to go to hopefully and see what they got going on but yeah Thanks for providing great information. Well, thank you, Northwest V6. I appreciate it. I live in the Netherlands. Where are you going, Corey? I don't know. I am horrible at world geography and knowing where I'm going. This is 100% one of those things. Follow me on Facebook right there so that when I, the event shows up, you'll be a part of it. 
like I've already started joining some of the groups. Like I'm in uh, Dinnerlay Israel group, and they're planning like we're going to give some talks in Israel. We'll probably give some talks in um, Jakarta, and I don't think we're giving any talks in Papua New Guinea. But you know, we're trying to do a lot. And when you start coordinating with multiple businesses, multiple people, multiple organizations, all of that stuff, it's really hard for me to be in the know versus. Uh, just going, yep, turns out I'm showing up here. Hopefully you guys show up. That's like my, all I can really do. So Bavarium is 15 miles from my home. It's not in Holland. It's in the Netherlands. Okay. Yep. Holland is just apart from the Netherlands and Bavarium is not in that part of the Netherlands. I attend almost every edition. Yeah. See, so like, I don't know a whole lot about that. So I was like, yes, if you're telling me it's in Holland, it's in Holland. But I, in my brain, I was like, I thought it was in the Netherlands. And it turns out like, oh, Holland is in the Netherlands, but it's in another part. Like, it's probably about the same as me asking you technicalities on different states in the United States. You'd be like, ah, you know, it's, I think it's on the West Coast, maybe, you know, it's like in California or Oregon or Washington, you know, it's over there. So, yes, but all I can say is it is my, uh, it is my goal to meet as many of you as I can, hang out, have fun, and do what I do. So, Yeah. Uh, I told people here that catfish eat guppies, and everyone told me no. Well, anything in a vacuum is true and not true. So, for instance, there are catfish that wouldn't eat guppies. There are also a lot of catfish that would eat guppies. So, a lot of that comes down to, well, we need more qualifying information. If you were to say, like, um, anchor catfish are murderers of guppies, like, well, that's a bit of a stretch. But if you're like, oh, red-tailed uh, catfish will eat guppies, like, well, yes, that's true, you know, so I think there's qualifying statements there. Please make a list of where and when you're in Europe. Facebook, that's all I can tell you. Until, until YouTube gives me a great way to put up a calendar, Facebook has got it dialed in. We can all discuss in that little Facebook event, you can pull in multiple people, you can post pictures, you can do all these things. Like, Facebook has got it going on in terms of a calendar. Until YouTube brings that in, you know, hate Facebook all you want. I need a tool to connect with you guys. And Facebook is allowing that. So that's all I can do. I've, I've looked into calendar type things on the website. They're garbage. I'm waiting for one to be developed that would be good. And also let other people give information. And yeah. Any trips to the UK? I don't think I have any planned. I did ask Chris that I want to go uh, to France to visit Nico Shrimp, um, which it wouldn't be impossible just to hop another flight and go to the UK. But mostly there's like, so the way the planning, this is how the planning goes, right? So you kind of get Chris and I, and we're like, yeah, we want to do all the things. Great. And then we go, okay, now we need to fund all the things. Okay, dinner is going to pay for some. I'm going to pay for some. We'll make it happen somehow. All right, we got funding. All right, now where do we want to go? Okay, we want to go, like I told him, I want to go to Singapore. I want to go visit guppies. I want to go to Peru. I want to go to Brazil. I want to go see more of Europe. I want to do all these things. Like, okay, well, here's what I have to do. Because there's always, just like I might tell someone last year, okay, I will go next year and I will go do that. He's already made some commitments too. So we got to fit all the commitments in and bring each other along. So that's like, why this three uh, trip thing is like all in a row because we have to hit some of these things. And so we start planning and then we make the events and it comes out for you guys. So when I say like, oh, I'm gonna be in Germany, when? Uh-huh, don't know yet. Oh, how many times? Uh-huh, maybe once, maybe three times? What are you doing? Uh-huh, not sure yet. So there's all these little things that we gotta hammer out, but we wanna make sure it's more than just like, hey, I'm in Germany. I, I'm eating lunch and then I'm flying out. Like we want to make sure, oh, are you doing an event? Are you doing a talk? Are we all going to meet up here? Why are we in Germany? What are we doing, right? And uh, yeah, we're, we're working on it. That's all I can say is it takes a lot from inception of like, we should do that to, okay, here's the plane tickets. Here's where we're staying. Here's who's going to host us. Here's what we've got okay to go access and film. Did we, like, for instance, when we go to Papua New Guinea, we have to stay in Jakarta for a few extra days so that we can get the permitting to legally take pictures and video. So it's it's not easy. Like we've been trying for months to get it, 
it, it's always easier when you're much closer, you know. And so we're working on it, you know, but it's not just easy like, oh, I paid my money, we're here. It, there's a lot of politics that get involved in this stuff. So, and I'm not good at that. I only speak English. Chris, Chris speaks seven, I think, seven languages. So, how do I vote for Jimmy again? You go to uh, the custom aquariums link, which uh, Candy has put in the chat, and go give a vote. Let's see how we're doing. Have you guys placed more orders than they have fulfilled so far today? No, you're losing. You're losing. They are still winning by about 50 orders. If you're watching right now, everything on the website is 10% off. Use the code 300K for 300,000 subscribers. I can promise you nothing's getting cheaper than this for a very, 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 very long time. Like maybe until I hit 400K. So, oh, it's another year away. Uh, we don't really do discounts. Everything's kind of bottom level price. I would go ahead and reap the benefits of that and get all the supplies you need right now. So place those orders. And uh, truth be told, hopefully we're going to liquidate some inventory. Not make a ton of money and profit, but we're going to liquidate some of that inventory and reinvest that into super secret project that I can't tell you guys about yet. I will say, can I can I say that? Is that a true statement? The, the super secret thing is the biggest thing we've ever done. And I can't say I've invested the most amount of money into it yet. By the time it's done, it will be the biggest product we've ever done money-wise also. But right now, this project that we're working on, uh, we're about $25,000 into it. So quite a big project. You know, that's it's been tying up a lot of my time. We've been kind of keeping it secret just because we want to make sure it actually comes to fruition and all that. So... But yes, any any supplies you guys can order from me would be a very, very big help uh, while we do this project. So I appreciate each and every order. Honestly, like that sounds corny, but my wife, so my wife and I were sitting in bed last night and we were answering some emails because you guys sent us emails and she goes, isn't it, I think she said, it, I think her exact quote was, isn't it nuts? how many orders we get now compared to last year. And she said, how many more? And so I went and looked and last year, I think we had done 2,400 orders all month of April, like maybe about 2,500. And this month we've already done five over 5,000. So we're already double. We have like a third of the month left to go. So we've grown at insane amounts of rates. And you know, we often ask each other, do you ever, did you ever think we would have gotten to this level of what we're doing? And, um, you know, my response to her was yes, because I saw, like, I have to plan at least a year or two in advance, where when you're kind of working in the business, you don't plan ahead. So my that's why I had to get out of the business. I had to get out of the day-to-day -day stuff so that I can plan where we're going to go. And we don't just hit these huge roadblocks and hurdles. So that's my job. My job is, one, to bring the content to you guys, but then also to make sure that we don't run into some huge problem down the road that we didn't see coming right and so you know we want to make sure that oh we hire another customer service rep before you know we get to a point where people are leaving bad reviews right because as you scale you know last year it was just like the employees kdi uh doing the emails now we have candy doing it full time and then you go Ooh, if you double again by next year, we probably have to have two or three people answering emails full time, right? So, you know, it's stuff like that going, okay, well, when should we bring on the next person? Like, okay, maybe give Candy another six months and then have her start training someone. Maybe the new person does all the team side emails. Maybe she does all the shipping side emails. And then we start thinking about, do we need to start limiting how many people just ask random questions. So like one of my big struggles, we got an email yesterday and I answered it personally. And the email said, uh, I think it was, I live in, it might even have been Arizona, which seems too recent because I was just talking about Arizona, but I think it was Arizona. And they said, it gets down to about 50 degrees at night. What are some colorful fish that I can breed outside? And I started the email off with like, ah, this is really a question that we do, shouldn't be answering. Like I did answer it. I was like Japanese rice fish, uh, rosy barbs, look into, um, oh, there was a couple more. I can't remember off the top of my head. But I have an internal, internal question of like, as we scale, 
is that a question we should or shouldn't be answering? Half of me says, yes, we should answer all questions if we can answer them. The other half of me goes, how much money should we invest into answering questions that are not at all in any way related to selling anything? And I realize that it's kind of one and the same. Like if you help people out eventually, hopefully they'll order from you. Um, but I'm thinking we need to put in some kind of, I don't want to call it a chat bot system, but a way to funnel, you know, like, what, how am I trying to say this? The goal would be that that email is not a crucial email, right? So if we answer that three days from now, that person gets the knowledge and be great. Meanwhile, if we have people waiting, oh, my fish is going to die, or my package is late, or I need to change the shipping address, those are much higher priority, right? So we need like almost a sorting system as that stuff comes in. Because right now we just take it like one at a time. What's the next one? What's the next one? What's the next one? And we need a like a priority rating system. We already have that. Like shipping side typically gets answered first because that's I ordered with the wrong email address, or I did a thing, or something's wrong, blah, blah, blah. And then team is general other questions, but... Yeah, I do think that my fish looks like it's about to die is more important than what should I do this summer with my pawns, right? I think so. So we got to figure out, that's in the back of my mind, how do we traverse that and not just drop the ball and make sure that it is a good working system for multiple people working on it and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. All right, where am I at right now? Got to find where I'm at. Uh, opening, oh, opinion on breeder, hold on. It's run into a word that I'm gonna have to decipher. Opinion on breeder resin, I buy it here in the UK. I have plecos and angels breeding like mad. Opinion on breeder resin, R-E-S-I-N. I buy it here in the UK. What is breeder resin? It's gotta be like, to make caves maybe? I don't know. I don't know what breeder resin is or if it's a different word that got autocorrected and my brain's not making the, oh, it's supposed to be that word logic at the moment. So, yeah. Cheshire Cat says, I noticed that people ask questions that you already have on videos. I personally would find that annoying. It is slightly annoying. Uh, we typically direct them to that video. Problem is, like with YouTube, we have 800 videos. If you just found us yesterday, you probably haven't had time to watch through even one one hundredth of the videos, right? So part of that system would be if, uh, let's say you said like, how do I breed fish for profit? The bot would say like, have you watched these six videos on breeding fish for profit? And then if you were like, yes, then maybe it would then forward the email through and be like, oh, well, what's your question besides those videos, right? Like that's, that you know, and there's always people to be like, oh, I'm just clicking through, I wanna to talk to Corey directly. Like that's always gonna be a problem. But um, but there will be some people like, oh, my question's answered. Great. And it was better than if it was through email, right? So even if that like fixed 20% of the incoming emails, that becomes a big portion of someone's day. Guy Moore says, how dependent is the further growth of your business on YouTube? Are you ever planning to have an affiliate in Europe uh, to sell my brand name products? So... So far, I don't have um, like a plan for an affiliate to do that. If someone approached me and, you know, ideally someone like Dennerlay or something like that would be like, wow, your products sell really well in the United States. What can we do to license and brand that and sell them wholesale to stores in Europe? Like that would be the ultimate, right? Short of that, it would be, um, it would be, like another retailer going, okay, I want to sell your products here. The other option that we have, and we, we're, we're looking into this. So basically our time map is like, take care of the United States, then take care of Canada because the next closest thing, then take care of UK. Because if we can get into the UK, we can ship throughout Europe, right? And so how I think that might actually be fulfilled is we can get product into the UK, work with someone or have them work for us, and they ship everything to Amazon, and then Amazon ships it out throughout the UK. That's my current thought. Uh, and then when it comes to how dependent is the further growth of my business on YouTube, so yes, we think about that a lot, or I think about that a lot. So if YouTube went away tomorrow, what would I have left? 
three weeks ago, I'd have about 50,000 uh, Instagram people and 50,000 Facebook people. And that would probably limit my advertising capabilities. So we've been investing into uh, Facebook. And so we're having a backup plan. We also invest into, um, what am I trying to say here? Like blog articles. And the more we're known, the more staying power we have, right? Like even if Nike never makes another commercial, they'll still sell Nikes for a very long time. And that's kind of our plan too, is like how can we make sure we're more than just a YouTube channel. I focus on that quite a bit. There's a lot of YouTubers without YouTube, they are nothing. And so one of the, well, let me qualify that. It's not that they're like a lesser being or anything. I'm just saying business wise. So a good example for me would be someone like catch them all fishing. He's got like 1.6 million subscribers. But then when you go to his Facebook page, it's like 5,000 people, right? So he's only really well known on Facebook and he's got some on Instagram. And the business is like selling some t-shirts through Teespring, but I don't see a much bigger business plan. And so if YouTube was to do a drastic shift, I think someone like that could just disappear. Now, he might have some great plan in the works and be like, wow, that was a great idea. But I see a lot of people that outside of YouTube, that's all they've kind of got going on. And so I'm not saying I have an insane amount going on, but... Uh, I am thinking like, what could I do if that changed? What what could I do? And yes, I could live stream on Facebook. I could, you know, really beef up my Facebook group. There's all these things I could do. You know, I go towards traditional marketing and all that. And I'm all at all these events. So hopefully my goal is to make actual connection with you guys. And you guys remember like, you know what? Videos or not, when I buy from Aquarium Co-op, it comes in right. It's at a great price, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to tell more people about it. Like, so the word of mouth is really the best marketing. But yes, that's, it's something that we think about. And I just like to prepare for the worst, you know? And so I hope that day never comes because I love being on YouTube, but you know how it goes. I need something like Zendesk to organize your support emails. Yeah, so I've looked into Zendesk. I've looked into a lot of these things. And from what I could tell, the value was only really um, there when you had multiple customer service reps. The other thing is I am looking into those types of apps and I fully believe it's going to take months to, um, to fully implement that with all the right articles and links and all that. Cause I've tried to do it and it's just such a mind blowing task of like, what if they ask this question? What if they ask this question? We don't have an article on that. We don't have a video on that. Like, so you want someone like, I almost want to hire someone and be like, yeah, here's your job. Build the most robust Q and a section we've ever seen. When someone asks a question through that bot that we don't have an answer for, come talk to Corey. I will give you an answer. Like I'll record it with my phone and then I need you to type it out or whatever that's going to be, whatever that process looks like. That is something I think we would be We would find value in. Uh, but there's a lot of, a lot of, what do they call that? A lot of sticks in the fire at the moment. So, yeah. All right. Uh, Tom Watts says, it is resin, by the way. Don't worry. I didn't know what it was before I started. Yeah. So, I haven't, it, to me, it sounds like a cool thing. You can mold your own uh, cave or breeding slate for, which sounds awesome. I would love to kind of play with that a little bit. But uh, I haven't seen anything like that in the U.S. So, might be super cool. Or I might be completely... I might be completely off with that. So, Lori Hartland says, congrats on 300K. Thank you, Lori. Uh, to those of you who are on the community page, you would have seen that she was nice enough to bring me a like anti-fatigue mat to stand on the second day of Aquashella because it was brutal. And uh, I genuinely cherish that because it takes, I always think it takes a lot um, to go out of your way to go do something like that for someone. Like... That was very thoughtful. No one had to do it. She chose to go do it. I thought that was rad. And, uh, you know, so I, I'm, a, I'm a type of guy that's going to try and pay it back tenfold. So hopefully you guys go check out her channel. She does a lot of with pets. She's also doing some stuff right now. She released a couple of fish videos, which she's done fish videos in the past. But right now she's working on some fish tanks. And I want to say she's got like, this is my bad if I'm wrong, but like 50,000 subscribers or so. So, you know, you might check it out. See if you're into other pets as well as fish. Escape Fluid, new member. Welcome aboard. 
Should I order easy green or root tabs for my sword plants? Uh, root tabs will give you the most bang for your buck. Think of it like with those guys, like a like a 75-25. 75 percent 75 they're gonna get it from the roots, 25 percent from the water column. So, yeah. Aqua talk, aqua top, aqua shell of Chicago. Is he doing a talk? I would assume they would have me do a talk because they had to bring the walls down just like they did for Joey uh, when I gave a talk because there was way more people than there was seats. So I would think logically they would want me to give a talk. That being said, that's very presumptuous by me and I try not to presume things. But I would say if I was in charge of that show, I personally would be like, whoa, you had a ton of people watching? Yes, we'd like you to do that again. So that's just my thought. Oh, it's okay. Tom Watts says it's a resin that softens water, lowers pH, and reduces nitrates. Amazing for L numbers, and uh, it's a physical thing you put in the canister. All right. Yeah, so I haven't played with any of those resins like that. Yeah. Good to know. Uh, let's see. Could you do a drop down on your contact page with separate emails, like shipping questions, and get them separated from the general Q&A, et cetera? Uh, yes, Kevin. We've tried that in the past. People literally just don't care. They, so what happens a lot of times is people, this is, this is legit what happens with probably 10% of all communications. Someone will call the store, email shipping side, email team side, send us a, a personal message on Instagram, all in the span of four minutes. Like all of that will happen. And then, so what happens is you got someone on the phone answering their question. You got someone on Facebook reading it, or I mean on Instagram reading it. And you got uh, someone answering on team side and shipping side. Meanwhile, now we've put four people to answer one question. It's really bad. And so, yes, it is a, a problem for us. And we, we really ask you, like, we try to be as efficient as possible. Just try to communicate with us in one way. We will get back to you, you know, unless you're just doing something crazy. And uh, everyone always gets bummed out when they see, like, dang it, this guy or girl has been responded to, like, four times now. Oh, I've got so much I got to get done today. Like we all just feel like, dang it, we got to do something better than this. More videos with Dean soon? Not super soon. I need. I don't even like. To, I'm I'm so busy that. I'm so busy. How can I convey how busy I am without revealing the secret project? Yeah, I'm. I'm just at a crazy level of busy. And so much so that when Dean comes over, typically him and Jimmy will film and they're doing something in my own fish room and I have to be somewhere else for the project. And this new project, there's a chance that Dean will be a part of it. Dean and I are planning to go to Peru together. So there, there is things coming up with Dean and I, but whether or not that will be specifically, you know, today, tomorrow, that type of thing, there's nothing we filmed currently, I believe. But yes, um... He's been on vacation, and I couldn't go on vacation with him. We were going to think about going to Singapore, and then it turned out that I got to do all these other trips. So, yeah. Any pond videos out soon? I can't wait to see the Goliad video. Goliad comes out next week. I really hope, so my hope is this. I hope you guys watch that thing beginning to start. It's going to be, it's a little bit more than an hour, which is a long ask. But that guy is doing so many incredible things, like just sustainable fish farming. He is like a dean, so you guys are going to love him. Like he's just really knowledgeable, really good, super personable, and he's doing such great things. I want everyone to watch it for like an hour, so that way the YouTube al algorithm just gives it a hug, and it's like, yeah, we'll take you to the top. Because it's not even for me. I really want Goliad Farms, I want it to be seen a sustainable fish farm that doesn't even have to change water is using uh, vegetation for fertilizer or for filtration. Got great African cichlids, got great live bears, great family owned business. It's been around forever. There's so many good things about it. I want him to just really ascend in his business. And that's one of the, the things that I really like to do. I like to find someone that needs that notoriety of like, wow, you're doing amazing things and you're not, killing it on social media. If I can help you do that, it's going to be so great. Um, so I'm really, really excited for that. And so that's my big ask. Like, even if you guys aren't enjoying it, just suffer through it, knowing that you're going to help some great family produce. It's going to lead to such a bigger thing. If that catches on, 
if that video catches on, it's going to lead to a change in the way that fish are, are farmed. And so I'm doing everything I absolutely can to please the algorithm, please you guys. You know, we really spent a lot of money. We're into it for thousands and thousands of dollars, which, you know, if this video goes viral, yes, it will break even. If it doesn't go viral, we're okay with that because we really believe in this subject. There's there's other things that will come out. Um, this will be the Goliad Farms video. There's another project where we've invested quite a bit of money for. We're, we're still waiting for it to come out, and that would be the documentary that was done on uh, basically fish from the wild all the way into fish tanks. And there's lots of people weighing in on it and it took years to produce. We, we, uh, you know, gave 15, $2,500. I think we gave $2,500, uh, to that project to get it done. And, uh, I've, I've watched through the whole hour long, uh, first cut of it. It's really good, really good. And so, um, we'll see when that comes out. I think it's going to be one of those things that gets released and everyone can watch that. I think it's, it'll be through VMO and it'll cost like $5 or something, which is a huge ask, but the, the budget on it was so small. The guy basically has worked on it for years and not made any money, and it's so important. Uh, I'm hoping we'll find a way to release it for free or something like that, but I can't, can't speak to that. The amount of money that kind of needs to be raised to pay for this guy's time is not something that Aquarium Co-op can really just write a check for, even though I would love to make it make it public for everyone to see it because it is such an important video. Which is why we invested in it the first time, you know, and so we invested, we invested as much as the other big corporations did. So Aquarium Co-op, and we invested over a year ago, right? Um, we invested the $2,500 and other very big corporations donated that amount of money too. So, you know, we stepped up because we feel it's very important. I'm hoping that some of the other big corporations can truly make this free. You know, not that they are more obligated than I am, but I'm hoping that maybe they have an advertising budget or something like that. They're like, you know what, we could steer that in the right direction here and uh, really make that happen. So we'll see. You know, I, it, if it can't become free, I'll be advocating of like, can I release it on my YouTube channel and give you the ad revenue? Like it, it just needs to be seen. Uh, both these videos that we're, I'm very passionate about need to be seen. I mean, don't get me wrong. We put out videos all week long. We make videos. Like, no one needs to see this live stream. But those two videos right there, the public needs to see those. They need to see sustainable fish farming. They need to see uh, how people actually live in Peru and how much money they make and what are their hardships and... What are the hardships importing the fish? And what are the hardships at the wholesalers? And what are the hardships with uh, the courts right now? What are the hardships with uh, selling them? What is the hardships right now? Like one of the big problems is the public is really against wild caught fish. Just in general, you go ask someone off the street, should we be keeping wild caught fish in our aquariums? And they say, no, that ruins the environment. The other problem is because you're doing that, you're forcing the person that made their money off of catching a fish for someone in the aquarium, they now have to take a much worse industry and now we're actually damaging the environment. So we need that education to get out there and it's not an easy subject. It's kind of one of those lesser of two evils, right? But that's the first step. Let's make this so it's not horrible. Then let's work on making it better. And there's so many things. There's, you know, PETA activists, and courts that are that are going on with that kind of stuff. There's a public perception. There is, um, you know, what's going on over in Peru and that kind of stuff. And there's people that take advantage of other people. And you just you need to see the whole story. And that's why it's a over an I think it's 90 minutes. I want to say it's 90 minutes. It's a full on documentary. Like don't 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 make any mistake. It's nothing like something Jimmy and I make. That is a full on documentary. And so it's a full real production that any true fish nerd is going to geek out so ridiculously hard it won't even be funny. You know, they've got experts from all around the world. A lot of it, I won't say a lot of it, but maybe 30% of it is subtitled because they're bringing in experts that don't speak our language, as in English, our language. And it's just, it's so important that you got to make sure it gets seen. It's not a race, you know, like slow and steady is going to win this race there, but we do need to make sure that everyone that wants to see it can see it. And $5, 
is it's an expense for some some say it's very cheap if you get 90 minutes of entertainment for five dollars obviously i would feel like i got a lot of value out of that um, but when it fully launches and everything whether it's free or not i will definitely make it readily known where you can watch it if you want to watch it and that type of stuff so yeah uh what is that documentary called let me see if i can tell you what the documentary is called uh let's see here Oh geez, my inbox is filling up here. All right, anyway. Um, oh, we found a bug on the website. Yep, I know about that bug, but I'm, what is it, documentary, doc? Oh, it's right there. I believe, and I don't know if this is the final title or anything like that, it is called Wild Caught, Aquarium Fish Trade of the Amazon. So that is, that's, I believe that's the name. I don't know if that is the official, like this is the release name, um, but I have been privy to watch the first 90 minute cut and it is really good. It is, it's one of those things that to make 90 minutes that can keep your attention, that means they filmed 700 hours. You know, they really just boiled it down uh, to the best possible uh, footage and stuff that needs to be in that narrative to tell the story correctly. So, yeah. Mean Fish Nine says, "I really hate slow mode." Well, for a mere five dollars a month, you could get rid of that. Members don't have to worry about slow mode, so it's the only way I can keep uh, chat even remotely uh, viewable. You know, if I was like a Philip DeFranco or someone that gets like fifty thousand people watching, you can. There's actually a setting where you can click that only members can make comments. So I would have to use something like that because that chat just started. It scrolls so fast. You swear it's not even words. But yeah. Where are we at? Who's winning the war on packages? It's close. It's within 35. So we're packing a little bit faster than we're picking at the moment or than we're ordering. Keep it up, guys. Keep it up. I'm told we have a clone aquarium co-op in the chat. How dare you? How dare you? All right. I guess it's my spiel time. We have a 10% sale going on in the store and online. 10% off everything, which doesn't seem like a big deal, except we've lowered prices so much over the last year that 10% off of our current crazy low prices is quite a deal. Most of our plants are $4.99. I'm going to take 10% off that. Most of uh, everything else got wicked cheaper. And so it, I, I can't, I suppose I can't guarantee because maybe we could negotiate a better plant price at the end of the year or something. But it is going to be very hard for us to ever get prices lower than where we are right now. So it's a great time to buy. You're supporting us on doing a big project. There's all these good benefits to be buying today. And uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, someone said that 300K was the 10%. That's just the bump we needed to pick up another CO2 art elite regulator. Well, I'm glad that's, you know, that pushed you right over the edge there. Um, truth being told, I want to be 100% transparent. We are going to stop selling CO2 regulators. And it's not because we don't like the CO2 art brand or anything like that. Uh, we were even looking at having our own made. The problem is we don't have a good support system for CO2 yet. And what I mean by that is there's so many questions coming in. People will buy one, have never used one before and don't know how to use one. And even when we recommend the video, there's so many questions that we need to develop some more articles. We need to develop some more videos and stuff like that so that people can make an educated decision before buying it. Because they come in and they're like, I read on the internet this, I read on the internet this, I read on the internet this. And we wanna make sure that we can boil that down. Cause right now every regular we sell for the most part, when you average it out, we're losing money with the amount of emails. A lot of times the email chain will go 20, 30 questions, emails back and forth deep. And it's very labor intensive. We have to have them get videos and we're troubleshooting. We're getting water parameters. And it comes down to things that are relatively uh, easy to understand if you've ever done CO2 before, which all this means is that I personally need to figure out a better education plan for the product we sell. And so we will not be restocking that until I can uh, fully build out that system to make it easier on everyone. So uh, when you see that those regulators go bye-bye, then um, that'll be why. 
we just need to do a better job at education. And it's going to be something that takes a while to flush out. And yeah, so there you go. Meanwhile, other people can sell them and we'll still answer some questions about them. They can make the money, but hopefully they'll be taking time to educate. We also have quite a few people, unfortunately, that will ask us questions about CO2 systems they bought elsewhere because now that we sell them and other people aren't answering the questions. So overall, got to build a better system, better mousetrap, and then we can bring them back. So yeah, welcome Brian's Aquatics. Welcome. All right. I had to get me some more of them shrimp hides. I know someone, oh, I know somehow a bunch of them would make a cool scape. Yes, these little humdingers right here. Whoop. I had one sitting here. Yes, I, I bet you there's something super cool you could do with like a ton of these. I really want to see someone, go ahead and steal my idea. I want someone on the back of their aquarium to uh, silicone a bunch of these because it reminds me of the old tank style where you'd have like um, African cichlid, like Julidochromis and Burchardii and that kind of stuff. They would spit their fry and they'd go live in these caves and they would come out. I would really love to see a scape where the whole back wall like that. You could also stick some moss in there and get that growing out. I just think that'd be a cool thing. It'd be kind of expensive. You don't want to do like a 20 gallon because you need like probably 40 of these things. That's like 120 bucks. So I, I'm not saying it's cheap, but it would probably look pretty cool. So get them while you can get them. I will showcase another product we're selling quite a bit of, and there's so many people that are like, I didn't know this was that good. The glass cleaner by Fritz is amazing. Uh, we buy it in massive bulk now, and I can afford to use it. My employees are like, why haven't we used this the whole time? It used to be back when we were much, much smaller. The price was like double, and it was too expensive to use in the store. But you can use it to clean your, you know, your phone, your monitors, but also it's really good, and it's ammonia-free and streak free for cleaning your glass aquariums and your acrylic aquariums. You just spray it on, wax on, wax off. And we use it all the time now before we're filming and that kind of stuff. And this is kind of like those mag floats. People are like, I didn't realize that scraper was that good. And then they go, I didn't realize this cleaner was that good. Yes. So yeah, I want to say it's like eight bucks or something like that. You get a lot of, a lot of squirting out of this thing. Yeah, Jimmy says, it's that good. Yes, it is good. So I always try to highlight products that I think should be selling a lot more that aren't. I mean, everything we sell, I feel like should sell because I wouldn't bring it in if I didn't think so. But there's times when I'm like, I don't think people understand how good this thing is. That's a problem. So uh, would I ever use organic dirt in fish tanks and sweet potatoes? Uh, I have done planted dirted tanks in the past. I've used organic miracle Grow. It works okay. A little bit goes a long, long way. I never want to use more than a quarter of an inch, very little. Uh, and I have not done the sweet potato thing yet. I want to. It's on my, I bought the tank I want to do it with and all that. It's on the want to do it list. All right. Would you rather use a battery-operated air pump or a USB with a battery pack in the event of a power outage emergency? Uh, I personally would, so I went back and forth. So if you're watching the channel for a long time, you've probably seen we were testing some battery-powered air pumps that would auto come on when the power went out. You also know that we sell this. I ended up going with this, and here's why. Every day that goes by, more and more people have a way to plug a USB in when the power is out. Every day people are getting battery packs, they're getting a jump start kit for the car that naturally has it, their car has uh, USB in it, you know, so you could run a really long airline tubing to your tank from your car even. So I ended up going with this. And outside right now, and you're gonna see it in a video, I've paired it with, there's so many good options for battery packs. One of them, uh, plugs right into your wall and you can use it to plug your phone, but you can also use it to charge this right and the minute the power goes out it automatically kicks on that's great I've got another one outside that is uh, solar powered so it's a solar powered battery pack and It sits in the Sun all day and so I have no power running to my pond But I have an air stone running all the time. It's great and so because it works on USB that works and so I believe this is my forward thinking, right? My forward thinking is 
it's a much better idea to have a USB product because it can be used all around the world. USB is standardized, so I can ship it to Canada. I can ship it to the UK. We don't have to do different plugs, nothing like that. Plus, battery packs are just becoming more and more and more and more and more popular. And so I went down that route, and I truly believe it will be what a lot of people start doing. Uh, in general, buying batteries is kind of a, uh, a dying thing. Like, we want things to be more and more rechargeable. So... Yes, Mellow Moogle says, oh dang, that would be great for summer tubbing. Yes, part of that is in the video that will come out in the next week or two. We're showing some of my ponds. We're showing you my plans on summer tubbing. And you'll see like, wow, yeah, you take that air pump and you take that solar-powered battery air bank and you got something that the aquarium hobby has needed for the last 20 years. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I'm a firm believer in that. But, you know, you can do what you like. And I've been testing both. So, yeah. All right, uh, any update on getting the Fluval Flex 34 gallon tanks? Uh, Eric, you could special order one through our store, uh, but in general, you know, it's the hashtag Fluval Trippin'. I, I would love to say that's gone away, but yes, no, two days ago, we're in the car, Randy and I, we're having a meeting like on our way to the next place, so we gotta have a meeting with someone else, right? And we get a call from Robert, the store manager, someone had called from Utah. <clears throat> someone from Utah called the store and said, hey, we have pallets full of stuff for you guys, and we're in Utah. Turns out it's a bunch of Fluval tanks and lights and that kind of stuff. So somehow they've shipped them to the entirely wrong state, not even a close name or anything. And so, unfortunately, they're going to go pick that up. Then they're going to ship it to us. So now it's like, oh, something we ordered two weeks ago is going to arrive another week from now. It's like three-week delay. So it's just that kind of stuff. Hashtag Fluval's tripping. And, you know, right now, Fluval's entirely sold out of all their lights. So when we run out, we are not. We can't even get more at the moment. It's just one of those, like, come on, you're a global corporation. Just play, like, forecast a little better. Something, you're killing us. It's just that, you know, that long sigh of, like, there's nothing we can do about this. You know, you have a great product. I still want to sell it. I just want it to be more in stock. That's all I want. So, yeah. All right. Um, you crazy? Says, I took your sponge filter pads, cut to fit the back of my glass over, like so the back strip, put some pothos through. It holds the plants at the perfect height and better than putting in the hang-on bag. That's what I'm saying. A million projects you can do with those. Over time, I believe that people are going to lose their minds about these pads. More and more people will use them and be like, wow, these are so handy. Like, I had this product made because back in the day before I owned a store, I would use the old, like, Fluval canister filter piece of sponge, and I would do so many things, but they were so expensive. And I always wanted, like, just a pad that I could do stuff with. And so I made, you know, that's the thing. I make the products I want as a hobbyist. That's what I do. I go, I wish this did a thing. I'm going to make it do a thing. What are my thoughts on marine land products? Um, I would say 80% absolute garbage, 20% perfection. So one of the videos, yeah, I forgot about that video. Maybe I did seven videos yesterday. Uh, I did a review on the marine land portrait tank. I think it's really, really good actually. For a $45 tank, I'm not sure you could do much better and keep the price point the same. I really like that tank. I hot rodded it a little bit, did some things there. Uh, showed you guys how to like what I thought was really good what I was like okay on the lighting obviously you're like well it could use if it had a hundred dollar light it'd be better like yes it also wouldn't be forty five dollars though so there's a lot of good things going on there for sure right uh, but I did a whole review on it it'll come out it's like a 20 minute review so you guys would probably hate it but if you're into that tank I really go through it I show you the mods I make I cut some things I do some other stuff and I do think it's a great tank for your desk at work or at home or anything like that. So, um, but yes, I think every company has products they do really, 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 really well. And then they have Me Too products. And I personally, I am not saying that Aquarium Co-op is immune to that either. There are products, if I was to really go, what could we cut out of here? There are products that are Me Too products. I'm like, you know what? We don't need that. You know, one of them being uh, Easy Green Nano. I feel like we could cut that out. Easy, green car or easy Carbon, I feel like we could cut that product line out. 
we keep it because it's easy enough for us to keep and people are buying it, but I'm not sure everyone needs it, you know? And so like when we have our sponge filters coming, we're bringing like five different ones. I personally think we can get away with three, but at five of them, there's a little bit more options. So I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, so I fully believe that we make a lot of great products too, but then there's also the chaff that's like, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet my reputation on that. I'm saying like we carry it. Yes. But you know, for what it's worth. You know, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, what are my thoughts about Awaze filters and tanks? So uh, for Awaze filters, I currently, so let me, let me back it up. Overall, overall, I feel that uh, Awaze is too highly priced. So I believe here's what's going on. And I don't know this to be true, but it's all gem German engineered and it's sold in Europe. I believe there's some kind of partnership going that Awaze is now in the US and they're not getting a very good buy price. And so when it comes over to the American market, it's very, very expensive. And so what I mean by that is their filter that's this big is more expensive than a Fluval FX6. Like that's pretty crazy. They also had another product while I was at their, in Florida, I was at their booth, right? By the way, shout out to Awaze. They had ridiculously good uh, like chocolate covered uh, Oreos, super good. Could have eaten my weight in those, only got one, was sad. Um, but I was talking with George Farmer and that kind of stuff there. But they had this like power head with tubing. And I was like, great, you have a product that I desperately wanna sell, I like that, I use it all the time. You guys have seen me put power heads on my pythons and that kind of stuff, I was like, yes, this makes sense. Aquarium co can get behind this, yes. And then I found out the wholesale price was $35. And I was like, what? That's, that, that's what it needs to retail. We're talking tubing and a power head. Like, that's it. So I was like, uh, yeah, I can't sell that. that. That is literally not in the realm. I can't be going, oh, I'm going to sell this for $70. Like, that just that makes no sense. And so, again, I, I, can't, I haven't found a way to work with them. They're great people. They're super nice. They do have pretty good products, but... It's not enough anymore to have a good product or be nice. You have to match up customer service being nice with affordable and quality. You have to match those three things to have a really good product anywhere in the world these days. And because the price is holding everything back, it, it just, it's a no-go for me. Like, I just, I can't look you guys in the eye and go, you know, you should buy this filter that's more expensive than an FX6 that has half the biological capacity and doesn't have the same warranty that a flu ball filter would have. I just can't do it, right? So their products are not bad though. That's that's the one good thing is when I can say like something could be overpriced and sometimes you just be willing to pay it. You know, I might be willing to pay $4 for a Snickers at the airport because I really want a Snickers knowing I can get it somewhere else cheaper, right? Like, but it's still a great Snickers. Kind of the same thing here. I just, I have a hard time recommending like, yeah, Go ahead and like pay at least 40% too much probably for a comparable filter in anyone else. So that's my problem with them. The tanks, which I haven't chimed in too much, they Randy got one of these like huge um, globe bio cube type of tanks. It's pretty cool. It's also like a billion dollars though. So they don't have a lot of competition on it. So it's hard to say, is it overpriced? Like, well, no one's doing these giant like sphere tanks. So I don't know. I want to say, what is it? It's like a 36 gallon or something. Let me see if I can see the price. A Waze uh, Globe Tank, maybe? I don't even know what they're officially calling it. Let's see. So that's a four gallon. So it's clearly more than the four gallon. I'm trying to find prices. 60 gallon with LED. Let me see. Oh, that one's only, let me see here. The one he got. Mm. Oh, 27 gallons? Yeah, so he got the 27 gallon version and like on Amazon right now, it's $379. You know, I, it's hard for me to quantify an under gravel filter round tank, which is super cool with some built in LEDs. Is that $379 cool? I think that's up to each individual person. Like I'd have a hard time spending it. That being said, if it was in my bedroom, that's kind of cool, right? It's definitely unique though. And the build quality seemed great. Whether it's worth that kind of money or not, that remains to be seen. Uh, I haven't really got to fiddle with it much since it's been set up at his house. So 
you know, the small, like, let's say, what's the eight gallon, maybe? I feel like they, I would never own the eight gallon. Eight gallon's 152 bucks. The 16 gallon is 234 bucks. Yeah, so I feel like 234 bucks, you jump all the way up to 379. Yeah, so I just haven't found a way, you know, I, I care about what you guys pay. I, I, I do think it's very important to what you guys pay because long term, I think you guys judge me on it too. When I'm like, oh, look at this guy. I just recommend to buy a Ferrari. Oh, must be nice. All right. Where is Jimmy moving? Moving to Ohio or back to Ohio, I should say. He's got family there. One of the reasons to go, right? Plus, he has, uh, we've both been jonesing for Captain Taco, which is a, a, a taco place we liked in Ohio. And, uh, yeah. Any carpeting plants? Good for sand substrate. Oof. Your best bet would be like moss mats. Yeah, in inherently ma or inherently sand is not good. And then when you mix it with carpeting plants, like double not good. Do I know why the Eheim why Eheim is getting out of the US market? I'm not hundred percent sure. I haven't been able to have any high level meetings with those guys. They always shrug me off whenever I see them internationally. Um all I can see is that they're actively seeming to be pulling out. Like it's getting harder and harder to get replacement parts. It's getting harder to get um, even just their products, right? So I don't know. It could be maybe they're not selling enough. I, I honestly, I don't know with that. So, you know, Eheim, if you're listening, sell to me direct. Like I guarantee you, if you sell to me direct, we cut out all these middle people, the price will be right. I'll move an insane amount of product and you can stay in the US. I won't carry everything. That's the one thing companies never want to hear from Aquarium Co-op. I'm like, no, I will sell all your great products. I won't touch any of your garbage. Well, we want you to carry everything. Nope, not doing it. Like, I'm just not doing it. Like, I don't care how good your candy bars are. I'm never buying and eating a Mars bar or a Milky Way. Get out of here with that garbage. Ain't nobody want that. You know, like, it just, nope. I'll sell all your Snickers. I'll sell all your almond uh Hershey bars, I'll sell, you know, I'll sell it all except for that garbage. Ain't nobody want that. And I see it time and time again. I went to a, a lawyer's office the other day and in his candy bowl, all he had left was three musketeers. And I was like, just throw that away. Like nobody wants that. Like no one is going, ooh, look at this nice selection, three musketeers. Nope, ain't happening. So, yeah. All right. Uh, I do, oh wait, I do the sand on the visible part along the wall, then stick some Eco Complete with a cover with some more sand. You could do that. The problem is with a lot of carpeting plants, the roots don't get very long. You really need them to tap into that uh, Eco Complete. So, does Aqua One have a presence in the USA? Not really, Stephen. Not so much. Well, I know there's new members that I've been neglecting because I've been on a rantathon for a little bit. Let me see if I can't acknowledge their existence if i can find the right screen over here maybe mean fish nine not being held back by the slow chat mode welcome to the good life and charlie bright also welcome all right oh and diesel weasel became a member so i'm talking about diesel weasel Ooh, where are we at we're battling oh wait you guys have put some headway on. You're within 25. If you guys place 25 more orders, you'd be on even, on par with the, uh, with the shipping team. Tides are battling. They're battling. It's getting hot in here. 80, just 80. Do I have the sweat pit yet? Nope. We're good. The, the stream goes until I, visibly there's too much sweat probably. That's, that's the indicator, by the way. You might not have known that, but at a certain point, I start sweating so much that I'm afraid I'm going to die of dehydration. So, the more you know. Give it my all. All right, new member. I saw it show up. We've got Mad Tanks in the house. Ooh, I've got, I've got some stuff from Mad Tanks. I just don't have it in here. Otherwise, I'd show it. I'd represent. By the way, there's a bunch of people 
not a bunch. There are a few people that I promised I would do things for while I was at Aquashella. One of them's like e-money. There's a couple other ones. I have not forgotten about you. I fully intend to make good on my word. But if you're listening right now, know that I'm just crazy busy and it is in my mind. And I do plan to make good on my word. So. Oh, three musketeers. How dare you? Ugh. I'm not even like, I, so I was, I was making a joke, but I'm serious. And that is my retirement end goal. I've got two goals in my life. One, get sponsored by something like uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups or Chocolate Milk or like Taco Bell just so I can have it free. And the other one, I was telling Randy, Randy doesn't get it, but I said, I want to have as many lifetime membership cards as a human can get. And he's like, what are you talking about? And uh, I want it so that like I can pull out this crazy card and be like, yes, I get all the free Jack in the Box I want. So I want to I want to do enough good things in the world where like other corporations are like, "You know what? Yeah, you get a free hot dog anytime you're in Philly." Like, "All right." So far, collection zero. Sponsorship zero. But hey, you got to strive for something, right? Welcome to well, welcome Caroline Epler. I can't believe you weren't already a member. You're like super fan number 4. I don't know. I'm not really ranking them, but like you got to be up there. You've been a strong supporter for a very long time. So, yes. All right. E Money was live fishing in New York an hour ago. Good to know. When's the fish farm video releasing of Goliad? I don't know. I haven't set the exact release date. I expect this week, though. Uh, that's part of my what day is it? Sunday right now. I got to place some orders for plants and that kind of stuff tonight. And then tomorrow I got to like basically schedule videos for a long time. So, uh, welcome gnome lumberjack. I like that. You know, one of my favorite shirts have been lost forever and it was, you don't know me. Red shirt had a gnome on it. My wife got me that, or I think my grandma got me that shirt and, uh, still miss it. Little tear for my, for my gnome buddy. All right. Corey, any thoughts on those Seachem filters? Oh, wait, it scrolled way. What was the question? Uh, one of the local fish stores in Arizona is pushing them hard. But I love my AquaClears and the sponges. Uh, so here is my, my story on that. I bought 40 of them. And I retrofitted the entire plant warehouse with those filters. Unanimously, every employee and myself was like, those things suck. Get rid of them. So... I would tell you that I would take uh, AquaClear filters any day of the week. They're cheaper and better. And Seachem, unfortunately, has missed the mark. So all I can say is that I really want something to be better than an AquaClear because I always will encourage innovation and making products better for us as hobbyists. But they haven't done that with that. There is quite a bit of... Um, I guess campaigning or whatever, like deals, like we gotta sell this garbage. We'll give you, you know, like there's deals like buy four, get one free, all that kind of crap going on. But that's that's more of a like we got we can't let this thing tank. We gotta we gotta make it work type of deal, and it's just not good. So I'm gonna say not good. All right, I guess it's time for my buy all of our stuff. It's 10% off today. Use the code 300K. Buy everything, swamp our employees. We need to raise some money for a super secret project. Not even raise money because we're not making a ton of money, but uh, we need to liquidate. Uh, we need to liquidate stock so that we can free up some of that capital to reinvest into this newfangled project. Am I going back to Goliad Farms? We've talked about it. Possibly, I want to bring Joel and Jimmy and uh, build some things on his farm. So we'll see how the video goes. And we'll see if it makes sense for Joel, myself, and Jimmy to fly out and go do some cool stuff at Goliad Farms or not. We'll see. Uh, Got to see how it plays out, I guess. It's one of those things, like, if the video does terrible, it's really expensive to fly extra people out and go do a project and then know that no one's going to watch it. So, yeah. Susan O'Dell, welcome to the team. Yes. All right, where am I at? I feel like there was a question I wanted to answer. 
I remember a long time ago, I commented on a video saying you need a Taco Bell black card or VIP card, and you replied that it'd be the death of you. It probably would, because I would drink way too much Baja Blast, and I'd probably eat a lot of steak quesadillas because and Mexican pizza. I feel like the minute you get the free card, regardless of how good or bad it tastes, you have to get the expensive items, right? I gotta get my value. But um, I'll, I'll, here's all I'll say. If anyone deserves the Taco Bell VIP black card, I think it's the guy that has this hat. That's all I'm saying. You know, been been around for a few years, been representing the Taco Bell. And, uh, yeah. Thank you to, uh, who was it originally sent this to me? What is his name? He was just starting to make some videos again. He's the person that really got Jimmy to make videos, too. I just can't remember his name. What's his name, Jimmy? The guy that got you to make videos and sent me this hat. Oh, uh, what fly is it? Yeah, Big Fly. Big Fly Multimedia. Yeah. He's the one that sent the hat and uh, got Jimmy to really start doing the videos. So, you know, shout out to the way back. He hasn't made a video in a long time, but it, he was making some rumblings like he was going to start back up. So, yeah. There is no good hang on back in the market right now. I don't know if that's... So part of it is you can make that argument that nothing's good because nothing's perfect. I like to side on what's the best one in the market. And for me, the best one in the market right now is the AquaClear. So, yeah. Ooh, Michael says, two orders with three shipments coming. Can't wait. I appreciate it, Michael. Yo, parasite question is important. I, I concur. I just got to find it. Let me see if I can find it. A Mexican rat? Uh, that's the problem. It's real hard to find these things. Oh no, I can't find it. If I see it again, I'll try. It's a hard time though. Scroll down. Oh, you want me to turn it into the pirate hat? The R hat? This is the... Yeah. So this is a good look, right? R. Uh, for someone who lives in Europe, what fertilizer would you recommend other than the Seachem stuff since Easy Green is not an option? I would look into the Denerlay all-in-one fertilizer and the Tropica all-in-one fertilizer. Uh, ooh, there was another one that was asking me about, what was it? Oh, Tropica plants. Have I ever stocked them? Yes. It was a train wreck. So the plants themselves were okay, but it took five days to get them to me, and they're like an hour and a half drive from here. So that was a problem. Customs was a, was a, was a nightmare. We want to make it, um, we want to make it work. Maybe someday. Hmm. Just ordered my first Fluval 3.0. Are there any settings you recommend or should I just use the default Planet Tank setting? Uh, I would use the Planet Tank setting and bring the uh, blue light all the way down. That's what I would do. You can have it be on at night, but during the day I have it all the way down. Best substrate for African cichlids, crushed coral. That's my, that's my main squeeze. What am I trying to trying to do? Hmm. Oh, the hat is back, someone says. Ever ran into Vibrio's bacteria? No, I haven't seen that one yet. Yes, it's someone says a taco mohawk. It's also it's known as a taco hawk. Yes. Kind of the Napoleon hat too. But Taco Bell, if you're watching, let's make the sponsorship happen. One day I just want I want to I want to somehow be so big that that actually happens, like that someone like tells a person that tells a person it's like oh oh yeah we'll sponsor that guy yeah we'll give him like a hundred bucks in Taco Bell a month like what do we care like that guy sure no Taco Bell's not sponsoring me they I'm way too much of a loose cannon to uh, get sponsored by someone like Taco Bell I mean I already have Chihuahuas and everything like I'm I've been running this game a long time. Their website or a book that has good general fish knowledge? No. Not, well, not, I'm sure there is. I just don't know of one. I don't know the one you can be like, yeah, just have that one. This thing is making, just so you guys know, the taco hat, my face is getting redder. Let's hold on and check. Uh oh. You see that right there? That's the beginning of the end. It gets to like this, and we have to cut it short. So I better take off the taco hat if we don't want to lose this whole thing. It is getting hot in here. Woo! All right. Inline heaters. Hydor makes one. They're just not super duper uh, reliable. So 
want someone else to do it better. Status of the coupe test strips. Uh, I've got the testing solutions, but I have not done the test yet. I'm bad at my job. I'll leave it at that. Any advantage of the Planet 3.0 over the Aqua Sky? The Aqua Sky puts out less light. Doesn't have a physical on or off button. And those are mostly it. It's mostly how much light do you need and do you need an on or off button? Those are the main differences there. Well, that's not true. You also get like uh, storm mode, like thunder mode and that stuff. You get a few other little, I call it gimmicky things. Some people really like it. I, I never need the, the, the thunderstorm mode for me. So, all right. Ooh, I have that hat. Mine says Dorito Locos Tacos. I used to be a manager at Taco Bell back in the day. My dream is for one day for you to sign it. I would, I would take pleasure in that honor. If you're listening, Taco Bell, you need to sell the creamy jalapeno sauce so I can buy it at the store. That's what I need. That's your free, uh, free million dollar idea. <laughs> Maybe air conditioning in the Taco Hawk. Yeah, we're gonna have to get some modifications going. All right, I might even have to get AC going in here one day. Like it's even in the winter, it was it's hot in here. It's just all the lighting we've added. There's so much lighting and just electronics. Even though we the computer itself to run this live stream is like on fire, and so that's outside. But we still have a fan exchanging air through here. But I might have to I might have to kick it up a notch. All right, I'm gonna get some Tropica Fritz from the UK. Yeah, I think you do doing right. Hmm. I've seen you catch, hold on. I've seen you catching fish wild with lucky schmuck. Cool stuff. Is there anything you can get uh, my neck of the woods? So nothing we, well, we can't legally collect. I've got an itchy nose, by the way. I'm gonna pick my nose the next hour, apparently. Uh, there's nothing we can collect legally locally. We've got the Olympic mud minnow, which is awesome. I've actually never seen one, but I, I wanna collect it, but I can't legally do it. Um, but that's where I'm going next week. I'm going to collect more fish with lucky schmuck. We, I bought, Real nets, spent like $200. We got real collecting nets waiting. This time, I will have a weapon of choice. And uh, I also invested in a GoPro 7. You guys will be happy to know that. I got a scuba mask that we can mount that thing on. I've got a hat we can mount it on. I've got a selfie stick. I got all the doodads to make GoPro happen in the wild. So we'll see if we can't put something together worth watching this time. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, there we go. I'm a bit worried because a few of my fish died a few days ago and they had a few red spikes sticking out. I was wondering if it was Camelanus red worms. Uh, most likely, yes. That's usually what that indicates. Um, this is, how do, I, how do I make Randy not hate me? Randy is the voice of reason. So I always, I put a lot onto Randy, right? My director of operations. Mostly like, Randy's on this shoulder, I'm on this shoulder, and Corey is an open book, and he's like, just tell him everything. And Randy's like, don't tell people about that yet. We may or may not be working on a medication for the red worm. So we may, we got a lot of testing to be done, a lot of, a lot of stuff. It's probably a year, year and a half out, but do know that when I recognize a big problem in the hobby, I will actively try and see what I can do about it. So... What's the code for 10% off? It is 300K. 300K. Yes. Ella Bob. Oh, I always. Oh, wait, that's not Ella Bob today. It's Erga Cilidae. It's a copepod. Possible infestation. Planted nano environments, bettas, autos, uh, shrimp, snails, and a tank, and bulls. I just got Cooper mine. Good and safe? I wouldn't do that. One, I would, first I would ask you like, are these things actually detrimental to your system? They're probably helping you. Two, I would probably, I would probably track down like a scarlet baddest or something like that and just get a little micro predator that'll eat those. The chemical, I just don't know that I would go that way. Cooper mine's a little dicey. What's the medicine for white poop? Use general cure. It could also just be stress, but if it's an internal parasite, general cure is the one I would use to treat it. So, take a thermometer on the next collection uh, for a heater myth info. Yeah, I need, I do need to 
someone that's listening, like Candy, Randy, someone, remind me to research the best waterproof, like digital thermometer that maybe it hooks to my phone or something. Like the problem is I forget. You're like, oh yeah, it's a thing. And then you're like, wait, two locations ago, what temperature was that? Oh, uh, you know, so I need a good way to log it too. So I got to do more research than just like a random thermometer because I'll lose it. So, hmm. Dang, that was the first time someone on YouTube answered my questions. Well, if you do it for enough hours, eventually, you know, or as my family says, every once in a while, a squirrel finds a nut. What does that even mean? Jimmy's like beating down the door out there or something. He tripped, he says. Tripped. Yeah. Funny, he manages to trip and punch me like in the face a lot. Weird, how he's always tripping. So. Uh-oh, Randy is listening. I'm in trouble. Ever thought about adding an air intake to a hang-on back filter? Air, st air stone goes inside the hang-on back and oxygenates the water flowing into the tank. No bubbles in the tank itself. More natural looking. Uh, you could do that, Richard, but you're going to get impeller cavitation. What does that mean? That means that the impeller is going to take those bubbles and it's going to cause a lot of erratic behavior and that will wear on it quite a bit. You're better off putting it into the hang-on back part, like where the filtration is. Yes, you can hot rod that. I've talked about that in videos. Putting an air stone in there um, works pretty well. And it also makes sure you're getting really good um, uh, circulation throughout all your biomedia too. So just put it right into the back of the hang-on part instead of the intake part. Yeah. Uh, Senye monitor is the best for temperatures, pH, etc. It's really good. Yeah, I've been looking into that. Um, but I feel like you have to plug it into a USB power source or maybe in a laptop and then you can run it with your, with your phone. I don't know. I need something that's completely like, let's say I'm in Papua New Guinea and I haven't seen like a real toilet and power for four days, I need it to work there too. So it's gotta be really like, can this live off the grid type of thing when you're way out in the jungle? So, but yeah, I have it. I've been looking into that. Darren McBurney, welcome. What does my wife got to say? Oh, both my wife and Candy sent me best waterproof heater uh, or thermometer for underwater. And my wife says, research digital thermometer that logs temps. <laughs> They're on it. So it's waiting for me. Where are we at? Oh, you guys are losing ground a little bit. You got, let's see, 28. You got like 40 packages to go to keep up. My packers are packing quick. And I know people are coming and going. So there's new people every hour that could be, uh, be taking advantage of this sale. So 300K, 10% off. Do it. Gotta find the chat. Where's the chat at? All right, Grant Cook says, hey Corey, I'm wa changing water in my 55 without a lid. About three gallons of water evaporated over four or five days. Just thought you might find my research interesting. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of factors depending on how much airflow, air temperatures and stuff like that. But yeah, you can get a lot of evaporation going on in your tanks. I just like I think every tank should have an air stone, I also think every tank should have a lid. There's too many benefits that outweigh the negatives. So I'm really a proponent of both. Cuts down on wattage from the heater, cuts down on jumpers, cuts down on evaporation, cuts down on stuff falling in, cuts down on so many things. Yes. Uh, yeah, you can buy a server. A server for what? What am I buying a server for? My brain's not making the leap. Probably something I said five minutes ago and now I can't remember. Can plants melt if they are too close to light? Yeah, if you put way too much light on them, they could melt. Yes. Ghost Hippie just spent $50 on the site. Well, thank you. We're now $50 closer to the, the VIP Taco Bell black card. Yes. All right. Speaking of which, I did demand, I demanded a, a lifetime guppy card from Kang Lee that Sunia and him were supposed to work on. I, that's never shown up. Hmm. I'm gonna have to circle back around there and be like, hey, how do I get that lifetime card that I probably won't use very much? All right. I'm telling you, Corey, I can't buy from you. Oh, wait, it scrolled, where'd it go? Uh, I offered you a solution. Open a store in the UK and I'll run it. Well, 
uh, that will probably never happen because I won't trust you. Like I have to, I'd have to trust someone. Like I'm not even sure I would trust Randy or Robert to run their own store at this point. It's very easy to be overcome by greed. Now these people are people that I very trust, or I trust a lot, but it, it's really hard to make decisions. They're like, no, no, no. We're just going to take the loss on this. Like, just take the loss. Doesn't matter. Like, overall, we have to stay the course. Is this going on the podcast? Yeah, it should be. We have John helping upload it. So I'm guessing he will. I don't know when. He's probably not. He probably didn't know it was going to happen. So, yes. All right. Trying to see. Ooh, the thing's updating. I'm all lost in my chats. Am I saying any super chats? Ooh, do I want anything for AGA? I don't think I will make it to that show. Uh, I don't think I necessarily need anything, Mad Tanks. I keep, I know I need to do some collaborations with you, and there might be some cool stuff for the new project we're working on. Yes, but I, I won't talk about that until it's actually, actually done. Man, I've been missing all kinds of uh, kinds of things. Jester's Aquarium says, any cool fish things you know of around PA? There's a lot of cool fish rooms around PA in drivable areas. But other than that, like, I don't know exactly who. Like, I don't, in my brain. Like, I think Eric Bodrock's close, but he had surgery recently. So, like, he's probably not up for fish room tours. But there's there's stuff around there. Rachel O'Leary lives in PA. Uh, yeah, I think I'm caught up now. I think I didn't miss too many. All right. I was neglecting them for too long. I was going real time, real time. I have a lot of scuds in my CRS tank. How do I get rid of them? Ooh, it's going to be really hard. Your best bet is probably to start a new tank, move the, the crystal red shrimp over there, and, yeah, leave the scuds behind. It's really, like, they're both invertebrates. It's going to be nearly impossible to get rid of one or the other without just manual sort. So, yeah. Can you get blue grain algae so bad that it can't be cured with erythromycin? I've never witnessed that, John. I've I've dealt with some crazy bad infestations. Sometimes it takes a couple of treatments, but I've so far I've never run into a strain that is resistant to erythromycin myself. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I just have never run into it. And I've you know, it's one of those things like I've probably treated erith or uh, green blue green algae a thousand or more times in my life i've never seen it yet doesn't mean that there's not a crazy strain out there that i don't have yet so yeah i have a goldfish i rescued with a bad swim bladder disorder healed them up but it comes back every few months i think it's genetic came back one and a half months ago and nothing is working i tried fasting uh yeah probably the problem with swim bladder is once muscles move you're pretty much always going to have that problem forever. It's kind of like, you know, you dislocate your knee or something and forever on the rest of your life, you're more prone to dislocating it just because you've stretched out the tendons and that kind of stuff. And kind of the same way with, uh, yeah, you're kind of the same way. All right. Neon Tetralite, eBay, 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 eBay eBay. Apparently I need to sell that light, even though it probably gets destroyed in shipping nine times out of ten, so I don't want to sell it. How to get your sponge filter on the intake of a hang-on back tank without... Okay. How to get your sponge filter on the intake for a hang-on back out of the tank without all the debris falling off. I'm taking it out to clean. Use a bag. Just go around it with a fish bag. Pull it off, then take the whole bag out. Use a Ziploc bag, use a fish bag. Uh, I've got videos on how to do it, like the how to clean your aquarium or how to uh, gravel vac your aquarium. That video has a demonstration on how to do it. Uh, some of There's a video that Jimmy put out recently that had a video on how to do it. So, yeah. All right. Swim bladder needs to be fed less. It's not 100% true. Uh, sometimes if the organs have changed or shifted, when you feed, yes, you're expanding its stomach, which will make it flip more, but, you know, so for instance, like, let's say you had a bad knee, 
the answer is to isn't to never walk again. It's just to do it carefully, right? So like, I'm always hesitant when people are like, oh, just don't do that anymore. Like, well, we need to be doing it, but we need to do it, you know, in a controlled manner. You know, we need to understand why it's happening and how we're going to prevent it. And it's a much more long, um, you know, much more long form plan. So, uh, best way to remove hair allergy, I would go with uh, like Siamese algiers, flag fish, um, maybe some mono shrimp, and then getting your balance and light or your fertilizers and light in balance so it doesn't regrow very fast. So, yeah. Just place an order without it, the discount code. Super excited to see what the super secret project is. Well, thank you, RM. I appreciate basically a 10% donation on top of that. That will, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to hype up the super secret product too much because it's not like the most insane thing ever. And I feel like I'm better downplaying it. So then it seems cooler than it is. But I do know the stars aligned to make this project happen. It wasn't supposed to happen for like another year. So, but there was some stuff we couldn't pass up on and it makes sense. Like it, it make on one level makes no sense at all to embark on this giant project knowing I'm going to be gone for a month next month and I'm gone like this week that I'm doing an event. So like of the next two months, I think I'm, this is like a true thing here. I think if I, well, I could look it up on the calendar. I'll tell you right now. So let me find my calendar. Today is Sunday. So if we, I'm here for one, two, three days, then I get back and I'm here for one, two, three. And then I've got AGA and then I've got one, two, three. So that's nine days. And then we've got that week there. So 10, 11, 12, 13. So I am home for 13 days of the next. So it goes, I'm not back until June 9th. So from today to June 9th, I'm only home 13 of those days. So that's like six weeks. Yeah, I'm not home that much. So it makes not a lot of sense to be embarking on this huge project and putting a lot of faith into Randy and the team and that kind of stuff. And yes, I'll be available remotely for some of it, but some of it in Papua New Guinea, no getting a hold of me. So we'll hope everything just kind of goes to plan. All right. No new members yet? Oh, geez. I thought there'd be new ones. I would be shouting them out. I've lost my chat. I've rambled too far. Jimmy's dropping money. I can hear it. I'm laughing over there. What are my thoughts on liquid CO2? Uh, my thoughts are it's an algicide, useful when you need to combat algae, but outside of that, limited uses. Uh, I myself don't use it in any of the like planted tanks regularly, like so all the warehouse tanks and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So I that's that's the uh, my advice there. Any update on the blue angel fry and what are the plans for them? Uh, I don't have an update other than when I asked Dean, he's like, yeah, they're growing. And then the plans for them probably those be sold at the store. Like usually what happens is Dean grows them out, I pay him, then we sell them, then we do another thing. Like that's because it gets too weird when you're like, oh, could you save a thing? Could you do a thing? Like, no, it's, it's we're talking way too much um, problems to get that done. So, yeah, that's the easiest way. Like, yep, they're for sale probably when they grow out. Hmm. How do you deal with customers that act, ask questions and don't want to hear your explanation? I work in a local fish store, and it's hard when they ask for advice but don't like where the don't like the answer or interrupt. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, there's always going to be customers that you can't get through to. So there's, let's say there's 10% of people that you're just never going to be able to connect with. Then there's going to be like 10% of people that devalue you as a human. So maybe you're like, you're just a pet store worker. Or I, we run into it like, oh, I'm afraid of males. Or I think less of women or whatever. There's going to be like some or like when Jimmy, Jim, Jimmy is Asian. So there's some people that are racist and won't deal with Jimmy. So there's going to be like another 10% of like preconceived notions are a problem. So now you got 80% of the public left. Of that, you probably have another 20% that just need hard convincing or they're not understanding it. So you got I use a lot of analogies. I go to dogs and cats. If you own fish, there's like an 82% chance they own a dog or a cat. And when you can put it into those terms, they start understanding, right? And so, uh, and then there's a bunch of people that will just take your advice. Like, oh, you're the professional. 
But those other people trying to use analogies and trying to size up, like, do they look like a car person? Do they look like a dog or a cat person? Do they look like they do a bunch of cooking? You know, like with Dean, I'll even use analogies where I'm like, hey, I don't know a whole lot about cooking, but it seems to me to be like this. Is that true? And he'd be like, yeah. And analogies just help myself understand and other people understand. And knowing that there's some people you're just never going to please. And so learn, what I find I teach my employees is learn that as soon as you can and then move on. So like, okay, no matter what, I'm never going to be able to convince you that you're not putting Neon, Tetris, and Oscars together. I voiced the concerns on what I think could go wrong. Great, let me bag up those Neon, Tetris, and sell them to you. And I just want you to be fully aware if they're eaten, we're not liable for it. And when they go, yep, I know, and they go, great, you make your money, you move on, you go help the next person that wants your expertise. That's the best path you can take. And uh, a lot of people say, well, I would never sell those Neon Tetris. Like, great, except they're just going to the next store and then they're going to buy them there and the same fate's going to happen. You may as well get the money for the store you work at so that they can afford to pay you so you can help the people that want to be helped, right? So if like Walmart's going to sell them those Neons and your mom and pop store won't, you'd much rather get that $30 sale and continue to pay for your wages and help you educate the people that want education than to let Walmart have it and then further not educate people, right? So that's my personal view on that. Uh, you crazy says, sorry, it's basic. I've got a 20 long plant or no 20 long pleco tank. I've got hang on back filtration that handles the bio load. However, there's such high flow suggestions on how to reduce the flow or fish for that. Okay. Or put some fish in there. Enjoy that high flow. Swim at the top. So Danios, you could perhaps possibly do one of the things you can do. And this is a lot of trial and error, which a lot of people don't like trial and error because it costs money. But a lot of times you can take a hang on back and put a smaller impeller in. So let's say you had an AquaClear 50 on that 20 long. You can probably put like an AquaClear like 20 impeller in there. And because the blades are smaller, that'll work. You can also try to melt or cut the blades shorter. Now you could crack it and break it. But if you can do that evenly, then the blades are smaller, they're gonna move less water as it spins, right? So you can do that. Now that might lead to premature failure. You might get like, oh, I only got eight years out of that impeller instead of 10 or something like that. So whenever you're modifying something, do know there's unintended consequences probably at some point. But I do find that you can play with that stuff a little bit, you know, if you don't have a control knob. Um, the other thing you could do, and this doesn't gonna look good, but you could get a a valve possibly and build that into the intake and you could choke it down a little bit um but yeah there's not a whole lot you can do outside of those things like you're gonna have to do some diy modification really or just downsize the filter so yeah got that answered all right yeah it's a pool filter sand the brand is h the h HTH to me means hole in the head. I got it from Ace True Hardware. It grows much better than it did when I tried the Black Tunisian Moon Sand, which clumps up real bad. All right. My pygmy quarries are breeding and the eggs are not hatching. It's been three months. Hmm. You might have a, a hardness issue or are they fungusing up? You know, a lot of times when they hatch, they're tiny. So make sure you're feeding like live baby brine every day. So I can hot rod my Aquaclear 70 by putting an impeller from an Aquaclear 110 in it? Yes, I believe that works. I believe you can do that one, and I think you can put a 70 into a 50. I've meant to do a whole video on that, but I've never gotten around to do it. But I do know that it is kind of common you know, DIY knowledge that you can uh, do those types of things. So, And I, I definitely know you can do it with some of the Penguin like bio wheel filters. We used to do that back in the day, and you could... You could kind of upsize and downsize them by switching out impellers and modifying them. So, yeah. Should aquariums be, should used aquariums be trusted? Uh, how do I decontaminate them? I'm not worried about them being contaminated. I'm worried about them blowing a seam. So I trust acrylic tanks a lot. Silicone tanks, not so much. Yeah. When am I going to show you pictures from our wedding? Um... I'm sure we could do that. Like I used to do a lot more um, like picture type stuff. I just, it, it takes a lot to get it going, but yeah, we have them. We'll, we'll figure out a way. Like maybe I'll share, if I remember, maybe I'll share one on the members thing or the community tab or something like that. 
The problem is no matter what I do, people complain. So people are like, if 100 people want to see it, there's 900 people that don't. And what they want to see, they don't want to see. So you kind of mix in all this stuff. And, you know, mostly it's my goal is you guys know a whole lot about me so that you understand where I'm coming from and, you know, maybe believe or don't believe what I do. Yeah. The more you know, I feel like uh, the more I do and the more you know me, the I feel like you trust me. Can I use today's code with Tazawa's tanks code? No, you can't. And his code's not even active. We got rid of basically everyone's codes. Yeah. Uh, I have some penguins in a box. Maybe that's a thing. Yeah. Try them out. Tuning in periodically, and I can see Corey has become more relaxed as time passes. I just—I think I'm just getting sweatier. Am I getting sweatier? Nope. Taco hat fixed it. You see what the... Th Wait, hold on. Uh-oh. Yep, we're sweating. We're sweating to the oldies in here. What time is it? It's 2.20? I've been live three hours and 20 minutes. Maybe I'll go till 4 if I can... I'm starting to get hungry. I'm going to need a Reese's delivery. Uh, a while ago, you gave me some help with my pee puffer. Want to say thanks? He's doing better now. Good. Glad to hear it. Uh, let's see. Back off. Okay, back. Oh, wait. Ah, block off part of the pickup tube with something. Uh, Pre-filter or something like that. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. I hadn't really thought about that, but you could probably, yeah, really play with that too. You all sometimes though you might just make that suction really strong from the other side, but without playing with it, I think you could probably do some of that. Yeah, seems like a logical path to explore. I would say. Uh, any suggestions for growing plants in a 13 gallon? They keep dying. I've got sand substrate, but plants are fine in my other tanks. Is it diatoms in the substrate? There's probably a host of reasons. One, sand naturally is makes it harder for plants. Make sure you're dosing fertilizers make sure you've got decent light but if you do those things plants grow it's kind of like i keep making keep making bologna sandwiches and they turn out terrible it's like well did you use cheese did you use bologna did you use bread and did you use some mayonnaise yes well then you you have a sandwich you know but if you're like oh instead of bread i use crackers like well yep that kind of is harder to make a sandwich so you know if you've got the pieces it should work are you delivering me Reese's, Jimmy? <laughs> I just see Jimmy keep walking around out there. He's probably waiting for me to be quiet so he can film. Uh, let's see. Just released. Oh, wait. Just realized I was four minutes behind. No wonder the chat didn't match the video. Yeah, I know. All right. I think I made it to the end. Yes. Jimmy's the best. And he's got the camera conspiracy shirt. I got him for that for his birthday. I mean, as you can see, Jimmy and I hate each other. So, yes, he'll never work for us once he leaves. I mean, I, I say that in jest. Because if you can't see, like, the great relationship Jimmy and I and the employees have, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I, I legitimately would be shocked if Jimmy was like, no, I finally made it. I'm free. I'm out of here forever. You know, if, if that ever happened, it would be a failure, failure in me to see what Jimmy's worth. And I think Jimmy's worth a lot. So, and I think there's somebody who said, I, I believe Jimmy realizes I saw good things in him early on and we're going to do a lot more bigger things in years to come. So, at least I hope so. Sweet, sweet Reese's. Someone says, Happy Easter, Jimmy. You just said, huh? Hey, Corey, I want to send my thanks to the whole Coop team for working extra hard this Easter. Well, we all work hard so that we can all maintain a life. Yeah, now that we got benefits and all that, I really feel like we are supplying, you know, what we need for people to live. Caleb bought me, brought me a cookie. All right, you're doing all right. Yeah, now Candy, that she works for me. She's like, just as, like, oh, is it four hours? Is it two hours? Am I going to get my life back? Plus, she's got to answer all the uh, all the emails and stuff, too. So she's working real hard right now. But we gave her a heads up. Any plans for more aquarium co-op mugs? Truth be told, Alexis, I have to remember where I bought them from. I keep digging through my email. I cannot find where we bought them from. So... I got to dig harder and find and be like, yeah, send us more mugs. 
Does high pH slow down plant growth? In general, anything in an extreme will slow it down. So if everything is like what it wants, then it typically grows faster. So high pH, super hard water, super low pH, really hot water, really cold water, like anything at the extreme pretty much slows down potential growth. So more meet the staff videos. That's like the worst video we've released in like the last three years. So either A, everyone hates rain, or B, no one really wants to watch that. So we're kind of introducing people through uh, like the unboxing and that stuff. People seem to be receptive to that. Oh, Katie's got the emails right now. All right. My wife putting in work. I wish I could work for Corey. Quality of life means a lot. I hope so. Is it better to join Patreon or become a member? I believe it's better to become a member on the channel. You get perks here that we're utilizing all the time. And it's one more, um, one more number to add that unlocks emojis and shows YouTube were a thing. It's always good. Mmm, 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 mmm. Love candy. It's been a while since I've had Reese's, honestly. All right, are tiger sand loaches good fish to keep? I'm not sure. Are those like the sumo loaches or are those like the tiger loaches that are in the Botia family and longer with the sloped snout? Those guys will get into gills uh, of fish and they're a little bit ornery. So depending on which one. Cindy 425, oh my God, you're still alive. Well, not alive, live. I just left the co-op, three mail trucks loading orders. Your stuff is on the way, people. That's right. So we had another meeting with mail professionals and we basically are lobbying. We need, I guess what they're calling the two-ton truck. We got to figure out, no, no one in Edmonds has a two-ton truck. And we're like, we got to figure out, like even on a Sunday, three trucks are taking away packages, right? So we need more capacity. We're working on it, you know, which don't get me wrong, nothing's getting delayed or anything like that. We're just trying to make it easier so that the post office employees don't hate us. And like a lot of times it'll be like, here comes a truck, we load it, that gets full, here comes the next truck, we load it, that gets full, and we're worrying, like, oh, is there more trucks coming? We pack more stuff, like, uh you know. So it makes it less stressful on us also. Do fish sleep? Uh, they definitely rest. I don't know if they actually sleep. They rest, though. I do know that. So, yes. Two ton is how heavy the chassis is, basically. Okay. Yeah, I don't... When I, when I finally see one, it's supposed to be a bigger truck. I'll go, oh, that's what a two ton truck looks like. <laughs> but right now, in my mind, I don't, I don't really... I'm guessing it's like the UPS Brown big type of van, but I don't know. Like, we don't have a dock for semi-trucks to show up, and we're not at that level yet, so, yeah. How to tell if to add liquid nit or liquid fertilizer other than low nitrate? Well, you'd look for deficiencies, but if you're using Easy Green, it's basically built around the nitrate, so I would just monitor that. Do fish drink water? Kind of. It goes through osmosis through their gills. It's also how they go pee. So, you know, when they're releasing urea, it's also through the gills, so it's a different function, but kind of. You know, without being able to, like, kind of drink that into their gills, it is very bad for them if they can't do that. You know, and you, you can get into that into osmo, what is it, osmo regulation shock, and, you know, that's one of the reasons burning gills from ammonia and stuff is really detrimental to them. So, yes. What do I got? I think I have old tank syndrome. I have hard, acidic water. Is this okay? Elaborate for me on fixing it if it's not. So... Mart Bernie, I would say a healthy tank, and this is this is very general here. A healthy tank that's being maintained well is fairly close to your water parameters, unless you're deliberately not doing that. So what I mean by that is like if my tanks are really far off from water, I'm probably not changing enough water, or I don't have enough buffer in there, or something like that. Now if you had really high pH water that was super alkaline with a lot of hardness in it, and you naturally wanted to bring it down for a species, yes, that's an instance where you wouldn't want it to match your tap water, and you might be neglecting it willfully to bring it down. 
Um, but in general, if it's real far off your tap and you're not, if you don't have an intentional plan to make it that way, yes, it's probably a sign you want to do some more water changes or lighten the load or whatever you're going to figure that out. Shoot him a Gavin. What was it? Jimmy and I were watching uh, uh, Happy Gilmore when we were in Florida. <laughs> not, we weren't in Florida together. We were in uh, Texas together. And yes, we love Shoot him a Gavin. It's a great movie. Can I hot rod a dinner lay corner filter that comes with the Shrimp King tank? Is it okay to replace the cartridge with sponge? Yes, definitely, Lindsay. Have at it. Oh, wait, wait. I mean, uh, officially, it can only be replaced with this sponge. It's specifically designed to be shrimp friendly. That's a lie. You could use any sponge out there, but I do sell sponge. Mmm. Steam? No, stream is epic. Can't wait to catch stuff after the first two hours when they upload alas i have to go to work luckily i'm at work i'm trying to breed true guppies can i can i get by with two tanks per strain yes it can be done you just got to call a lot so remove anything that are imperfect of what you're trying to do so potato puffer care tips uh how do i tell if he or she is healthy and happy also, am I allowed to ask the same question repeatedly? I don't want to spam. So it's like, well, I answer that second part. You don't want to spam it all the time, but at the same time, if you're like, okay, it's been like 10, 15, 20 minutes, he hasn't answered it. It either means A, I don't like your question, or B, uh, I just haven't seen it. And a lot of times I haven't seen it. So with this guy, or with this puffer, I would say um, like the humpback puffer, which is I'm assuming what you're talking about, they like to burrow down in between rocks and they like to have a lot of current. Them being happy is mostly if they're eating well. If they eat well, they're reasonably happy when it comes to those puffers. They're ambush predators. They don't really show you a lot of affection. Uh, they just kind of, I'm here and I'm hunting all the time. That's kind of what they do. So, yeah. Came home yesterday to find my 8-inch male VC10, which is a type of African cichlid. Uh, gap sustained an eye injury. I think he has crashed into the wave maker. The right eye is Popeye and the pip wait, pupil appears red. Treatment and suggestions. If you don't have live plants, I'd put some salt in there, maybe as much as one tablespoon per gallon. Otherwise, or in addition, go ahead and put erythromycin in there. Fight off all the bacterial infection. What happens when we hurt our eye? We got to keep it clean, right? Keep it off, fight off bacteria. It'll heal itself. Same thing for your fish. Keep it clean with salt or, and, or, uh, maricin or erythromycin, either one of those. So I will say this is something that comes up a lot. A lot of people say like X amount of employees should get a raise because they're so efficient. So in my opinion, just because someone does their job well, doesn't mean they should get a raise, right? So should I get a raise? Let's say I make a thousand dollars an hour and I do a good live stream. Should I get a raise or should I just be earning my money? Same thing with a lot of our employees. In my opinion, we, fa we pay a lot of them very fairly, and I'm not attacking uh, you know, candy or anything like that. I'm just addressing this because it comes up quite a few times, like people need raises. So I think the culture states that we're so used to people being underpaid for what they're worth that inherently we want to see them get more money because we don't want to lose them. And so, yes, uh, I try to... Uh, pay people very well as Katie or as Candy has stated, which I don't like to state these things with, unless the employee is okay with it. She says, I've already received a raise. Thank you. Yes. So she's been working with us uh, for I think three or four months. Time flies for me. It could be nine months for all I know. So I'm really bad if I've forgotten. But yes, she already has uh, gotten a raise. And in general, you know, I've heard this come out of Randy's mouth. I've never worked somewhere where so many raises have come so quickly and so fast for everyone. And in general, I remain as true as I possibly can to if we make a bunch more money, I want to pay people a bunch more money. I want to hire more people. I want to make sure they get to attend their kids' recital. I want to do all these things. There's more than just money. I see a lot of people that like money, but a lot of people like to be rewarded with freedom as well. Like, oh, I really got to go do this on a Wednesday afternoon. Can I make that happen? And you know, so we try to accommodate in as many ways as we can, and I do encourage employees, if they're not happy, come talk to me. We'll see, like, oh, why do you need more money, or what are we doing wrong, or, you know, what have we not noticed that warrants more money, or why, you know? So it's a two-way street, 
And in general, um, yeah. So Kyle says, can you please chill on the bragging about getting a raise? It's not a good thing for the Aquarium Co-op. I, I would disagree. I would think the best thing you could possibly do is talking about getting raises. Uh, I think it's beneficial to all my employees. I think it's beneficial to the public. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's ever bad when employees are saying like, oh, we're paid really great and I love working here. Like, that's not a bad thing. Now, you could have employees that say, oh, I've never gotten a raise, but I believe that every single employee has basically gotten a raise within the last year. Like, everyone gets raises. We definitely are much more than the standard 3% raise or anything like that. Uh, lots more perks, pizza parties, all that kind of stuff happens all the time. And uh, so, yes, I, I don't recommend everyone just stand on the streets and say, like, oh, Aquarium Co-op is amazing and blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, uh, I would not prevent my employees from you know, saying like, oh, I'm really enjoying work. I'm glad that our our fridge is stocked with monsters and Diet Cokes and sodas and other stuff and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Uh, what color white on the Fluol 3.0 causes more allergy or does it not matter? I mean, technically spectrum matters, but so so little that it's not even worth it. Like intensity is more important than uh, spectrum. And there's going to be hardcore nerds who would fight me to the death on that. But for all reasonable people to own an aquarium, you're probably better off reducing the overall amount of light than you are strategically picking one of those. Like you got to do a lot more learning about what colors plants see easier than others, that type of thing. Like someone's calling me out, like, because I say plants can't see blue light. They, they can see it on such a minute amount level that, yes, it's technically possible. But at the same time, all the other spectrums of color, they can see so much better. Our eyes see greens really well, but plants see green the worst, you know, of not, not worse than blue, but of reds and greens and red, red, blue, and green. Uh, they see blue the worst, green the second worst, red the best. That's why a lot of like grow lights you'll see will be in red and they'll be in purples and that kind of stuff. And so, yes, we're talking on a spectrum of things here. And a lot of people like to take literal things like you said this. The reality is like, well, we're cutting through a lot of because you most people probably haven't done a lot of scientific research or read papers. It doesn't make sense to go down that rabbit hole so far that it confuses you more as opposed to just going, er, yeah, all intents and purposes. Yeah, reducing light is going to be better than focusing on what spectrum of white because um, it just doesn't matter that much to plants when we're, you know, if we're talking about balancing between white light and blue light yes you would want more white than blue but even then at a 10,000 kelvin spectrum you might visually think it looks really good plants are responding to it fairly well and you might choose that over another spectrum anyway so a lot of times what we like to look at is going to trump whatever uh, is going on anyway outside of extremes of like oh i own a plant farm and i have plant farm and i have to maximize growth type of deal so yeah like pygmy corridors are breeding. We already answered that one. So you'll have to re-listen to that uh, MR Aquarium. Like the eggs aren't hatching. We already answered that a little while ago. Um, hmm. I work at a local fish store. All, all right. I worked at a local fish store all through high school, making barely minimum wage the entire time. Great to see an employer that shall share the wealth and treat employees or treat people with treat people who deal with the customer service so well. I mean, I'm sure there's people that are doing it better than we do. All I can tell my employees and our customers is I do what I feel like is about the best I can do and maintain and be profitable and sustainable. You know, we could go like, oh, everyone's making $50 an hour. We're also going out of business, you know. So there's obviously tactical things we have to do. Sometimes, well, we're not going to give out a pay raise for a few months. We want to do this project. Then we might have money. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. Oh, we thought the market was going to do this. Now it's not doing that. You know, there's a lot of things that came into play this year, like shipping getting more expensive, uh, tariffs, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's just like, whoo, yeah. Prager024, welcome to becoming a member. Hey, just curious. I bought my membership today. When does it tick over? Same day next month or the end of the month. I think it's like at 30 days. So I think it wouldn't be just the beginning. I think it's just straight up at 30 days. I think. 
That being said, I haven't tracked my memberships of the people I am with to know. Like, I just eventually I get the excitement, like, cool, I got a new icon. All right. Yeah. Just got a promotion at my local fish store. Oh, where'd that go? Uh, yes. And now I'm in charge of ordering. Any tips? Uh, so, Justin, my tips are. I would establish a good relationship with the person you're ordering from. So what I mean by that is through email go, hey, what makes sense? Do you guys like it in 25 fish per bag or do you really think that 30 fish per bag do better? Or know that you like to put 20 in a bag and at 25, they're a little crowded. We have a little bit worse death rate. And when you can build that relationship with them, they'll be like, hey, by the way, you know, Cardinal Touch is a little weak this week. Just let you know, you can still order them just little week maybe you only order 25 and so you're normal 50 right so if you can work out that kind of relationship and help them out a little bit sometimes like you can get great deals when you're like oh you i see you're ordering 50 cardinals we only had 62 we'd give you a deal if you bought all 62 clear that tank out for us some will never be uh, uh what what am i trying to say uh receptive to that others will be like oh that'd be great you know, and a lot of times we have that with all of our, our wholesalers. So like if it's if we're ordering X and it's within 10 or 20 percent, it will clear the tank out. We'll always take that from you. Just like let's make it easier. Let's not spread sickness. It just makes sense. We want to do a lot of things that make sense. And then we get a lot further when we ask things that make sense. Like, well, could we get, you know, can we get it so you're not packing? You know, sometimes you'll get people trying to save money and they're putting cold water goldfish in with cardinal tetras and like those bags touch the cold water from the goldfish just cool down the tetras now you're fighting more ick so you can get these kind of two-way street things going like can we just get the packers on the same page here and not not do that type of deal yeah will lava rock increase my ph uh also congrats on 300k most lava rocks should be inert there are types of lava rock that could raise it but all like the red lava rock i've ever dealt with i've never really seen much gains in the ph for me do i recommend uh and uh, do you recommend and preventative meds for your tank if so what are the meds uh yes david we have the quarantine trio i recommend that for every fish you ever come in contact with we have a whole video on it but it's basically an antibiotic, which is erythromycin is the active ingredient. You can buy API erythromycin or the cheaper uh, Fritz or Mardell Marison. We, we, we include that in our package. I use ICX. ICX fights off external parasites and is an antifungal agent. And then we also use General Cure, which is an internal kind of anti-tapeworm parasite uh, thing. And I use all three of those typically. And if I'm not in a rush, I spread them out. If I am in a rush, I put them all at the same time. And I treat any active infection separately. So if you know you have ick, just only use ick x until you clear that up. Then go ahead and deworm them and then any antibiotics if you need it. All right. Can root tabs contribute to allergy? Would they be better uh, to use instead of liquid to give less allergy? They could be more beneficial. If you're not using like a, an undergravel filter, most of that stays trapped in the bottom there. Uh, but a lot of plants do like their nutrients out of the water. So it, it can be a catch-22, but if you set up your tank where it's only using like crypts, swords, like sword plants, and maybe like valves, you could do nothing but root tabs. Yeah. You see my fur babies? Not today. My wife's at work, and Jimmy's working on something, and my babies are probably asleep right now. So, the no-go. Although Sassy's looking super cute because she just got a haircut. I'm struggling with diatoms, my 13 gallon with a beta and some glow lights and a nerite racer snail. What can I do other than frequent water changes? Uh, they just keep coming back. You could use a phosphate pad or maybe purigen to help you chemically to combat that. Um, do you have plants in there? Like it, it didn't say any plants, but you can get some plants to absorb some of that as well. Yeah. Uh, Corydora adolfi and Limia tridens in a 30 gallon tank with medium plant coverage. Any tips to spawn these together or should they be separate? Uh, mostly I would just insane amounts of food. Insane amounts. Um, lots of frozen bloodworms or live blackworms. If you put the food or rapashi food, a lot of rapashi food, you'll get those things spawning. Corydoras for sure. Like if you get the Corydoras spawning, pretty much the other, like the Limias, they're a live bear, they're going to crank out fry. 
Medtrio sold out. That is true. Uh, General Cure API uh, is bad at their job, and there's none for us to buy. So we bought... Jimmy's dropping stuff back there. <laughs> he says sorry. Uh, we bought everything we could buy locally, and then they got shorted, and we're buying from across the country. It's on the way. We bought from another wholesaler. It was down south. They... So like when I say buying out, we bought out one. They only had 63 in stock. That lasts us a couple of days. We've got more coming from the East Coast, but even they limited. We said we'd like to buy all of it. And they go, well, we can't allow that. And so we're probably only getting like 100. That's going to be like another week worth maybe. And so, yeah, it's a problem. That's one of the, you know, people always say it's a good problem to have. And I always say, is it? Is it a good problem to be telling people to buy the the quarantine trio and then be sold out like it's not that great of an idea unfortunately and you know to me it's a med that like it's kind of like when we run out of easy green i'm very hard on myself when we run out of easy green because our forecasting has gone wrong or there's a delay in production it's like we know that product sells really 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 well and we lose a lot of money every day it's out of stock and so same thing like we know general cure sells pretty well they should just not be out and I'm sure there's some story on their end on why it's out. But the reality is the person on the other side of the computer ordering it right now doesn't want to hear it. Like they just know, oh, it's not there. That's all I know. I just know it's not there. So it's unfortunate. Uh, a little bit of personal about Corey. Do you have any other hobbies? Not really, unfortunately. My hobbies that I would say that could rise up again if I give myself some free time would be playing Magic the Gathering. Possibly a little bit of gaming, but I just feel like I can't get back into it. I feel like the game of business is just a better game for me. So I really, really, really want to take up ping pong. I just, I love racket sports and it rains so much here that I don't really want to get into tennis. And I feel like I'm not in shape enough to do like racquetball and badminton's typically outside. Maybe I could find an indoor gym that had it. So I'm thinking about really taking up some ping pong but i need to find someone who actually wants to play with me a lot of people are like ping pong what's wrong with you and i'm like yeah it's something we can do anytime it doesn't have to be too long you know like games are quick you can go kill a couple hours um so yeah i'm hoping to take up something like ping pong and i've tried to take up like photography and some other stuff but the reality is i am 100 percent addicted to working and until i feel like i hit the ceiling on that there's not a lot of time for other stuff like imagine so imagine you're like, cool, I can go do a hobby this weekend. Or you could fly anywhere in the world and go out in nature and check it out. Like I pretty much always want to go. And that's the thing is because you guys support what I do, I could pretty much just pick a country and fly there and go do it. And so I try to do that as often as I can. And that is weird that when your hobby is kind of like what makes you money also. So, you know, I still love fish and I like to see stuff. So... Yeah, the one thing I am trying to do is I'm trying to include my wife some more and we're working on what we're going to do because we have dogs, right? So if we travel together, someone's got to take care of the dogs and that kind of stuff. So yeah. Welcome, Jay Berg, the membership team. All right, hey everyone. Oh, I love ping pong. I'm the family champ. That's right. I need to be the family champion sponsored by Taco Bell. All right, I had an aggressive leopard gecko. Any tips on selling him? Hmm. I feel like the reptile world, you're lucky to give it to a store for free. Like, that's just so common in reptile world of like, oh, this reptile is getting me home to the store for free. So I don't know. A lot of, a lot of those reptiles are really hard to rehome. So. What color do I play in Magic? Uh, I typically lean towards blue and red. In a previous life, uh, I've qualified for the Pro Tour and played very, very, very competitively. Like I used to play a lot of Vintage and um, uh, Type 1.5, it was called back then before it was Legacy. And at one point, I was like 42nd in the world. Um, so yes, very heavily competitive in that. I mean, I played Type 2 and some of the other formats because it paid off money. But you can see I was on a Magic team and we would go to events and we'd basically put a team together of four or five people and make sure we took first through third home so we could take all the money out of that place and all the packs and all that stuff. And so we did it at a you know reasonably high level. And uh, you know I still visit with some of those people 
not, you know, some of them, unfortunately, some of them have passed away and some of them moved away and that kind of stuff. But um, it was some good, good, good times in my life kept me out of trouble. Taught me a lot about business too, because I used to be, um, I guess, as you would call it, a dealer. I would buy and sell magic cards all day long. I ran a pet, or not a pet store, but a, a, a gaming store for a while. You know, I was, I ma well, I didn't run it. I managed it. So I didn't own it. But yeah. Could you hire a 16 year old? Uh, technically we can. It, so far it's been hard to hire uh, people who can't work full time. So then it becomes only weekends and a lot of times they've got, because they're going to school during the week, then they gotta miss a lot of those weekend days. So we do have uh, someone who is going to school and working for us, but it has been a challenge to keep them working all the time. And so, yes, legally we can hire someone that's 16 Practically, it doesn't fit our schedule really well yet. So, but there might be a good time. Like, it's really hard to train. Like, let's say you're 16. It's really hard to train you, you know, during the week and make you really, really good so that you can be good at uh, weekend sales where it's like fast and furious and there's a ton of people coming and going all day long, right? So, um, yeah, it's it's not, a, not impossible, but... It can be a little difficult. And we run into like people going to college afterwards, so we only get you for maybe a couple of years, which that is a very short term in our business. We want to keep you forever. So, uh, Do I place root tabs right under the plant? Yeah, more or less. You just want to make sure if they had roots there that they're going to be able to tap into it. Bryn Gully, welcome to the team. You can now enjoy chat that is not slowed and different emoji memes. I'm gonna hit them all right now. Boom. That's right. I'm always on the on the lookout for a good emoticon meme. A good meme. A mix of video games and magic kept me out of trouble when I was in high school. When a lot of people were out getting in trouble and partying, I was playing magic. Me too. You basically described my life. I still play WoW. I haven't played WoW in years at this point. Um, Part of the problem is a game like that, it's so much better when you can play like eight hours a day, let's be honest, right? And so I, I have a problem that I can only be competitive at things. And so if I'm not being super competitive, I don't want to play at all. And so I would have to be in the competitive scene, whether it's raiding, whether it's in the arena. You know, I'm, I'm very big into player versus player instead of player versus AI. So should I have a little salt in the tank when I do a water change? Uh, not necessarily, Alice. I don't recommend just a medicinal dosing. I recommend you either dosing for an active infection or not at all. That's my personal recommendations. Unless you were trying to use um, like marine salt just for the minerals, but that's kind of a different talk. Steps to remove blackbeard algae in a planet tank. I tried hydrogen peroxide, but it keeps coming back. Well, so there's two things going on there. One is killing algae. The other one is preventing it from coming back. So hydrogen peroxide usually will kill it, but you've made an environment that is naturally good for uh, blackbird algae. So do things like uh, improve circulation, look at lighting, make sure if it's like old T8 bulbs or newer bulbs, maybe you gotta increase the lighting, maybe you gotta cut it back, make sure fertilizers are dialed in, make sure that your environment is perfect for growing plants. Then go ahead and kill all that algae. And if the plants are really thriving, the algae shouldn't come back. So that's, those are the steps, really, is that, one, you, you already know how to kill it, but it's coming back. So then go ahead and focus on how do I make it so that plants grow really, really, really well, and then usually you won't run into that much problem. Like uh, Ram Phonic says, BBA is usually an imbalance. Yes, when things are in balance, algae typically recedes a little bit. What's my favorite variety of nerite snail, and what type would you recommend for beginners? I think the best bang for buck and longevity in your aquarium is the olive nerite. It's not a showstopper. It doesn't look insanely cool, but those things are bulletproof. Like, they last a long time. They're really good eaters, and they're cheap. Yeah, so I, would, I like those a lot. Have you ever bred jewel cichlids and had success for their eggs? Uh, only at a store I worked at, which a lot of those fish are kind of like, oh, you had water, they will breed. I'd be tempted to bring some back from Florida, though, up in the wild. What would I stock, or wait, what stock would you put in a 100-gallon? I would do, uh, right now, if I could only have one tank and I couldn't be guppies, it would be probably tenopoma leaf fish with, um, 
Congo Tetras and Corridoras. That's probably what I would go with. Just right now, feeling in the moment like I would love that tank. That tank would be awesome. But ask me tomorrow, it might be goldfish. Ask me the next day, it might be something else. Is a Pleco a bad first fish for a newly cycled tank? Yes, Bryn. Uh, the reason why I think so is because it's one of the few fish you can't control how much it eats. And what I mean by that is, while your tank's cycling, you might get a lot of algae growing. That algae at the beginning will consume waste. So algae, while it grows, helps your tank. But if that pleco is always eating it and making more waste, then you've got you could get some ammonia buildup and some things going on. So I like a, a fish that oh I'm just putting in two pellets and it's two pellets every day and I can control that exactly how I want. Oh ammonia is rising, stop feeding. But if algae is growing, I can't just like snap my fingers and make it stop growing. So I like to be able to control it. I think plecos are a good you know fourth or fifth edition. That being said, I like a good layer of algae. So. That's just me personally. I like algae pretty much everywhere except on the front glass. Because it's all part of that. Part of that. <laughs> oh man, I was laughing. Part of that ecosystem. I'm laughing because it's become a thing now. It's like a meme. Says, Alice says, how's that pit stain doing? Oh, it's pretty good. Yep. Yep. Oh wait, how do I do this? Yeah. Ah, it's pretty good, right? The things I do for the public. Have I ever kept crayfish? No, I can't keep crayfish because they're illegal in my state. So I can only live vicariously through others. Uh, there's been some crazy crabs we could keep that were from like Lake Tanganyika uh, or Lake Malawi that we're at a store I used to work at. But I've never really got to delve too deep into the crayfish world, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Just bought. Oh wait, just bought the stuff to set up a 10-gallon planet tank. I want least killifish. Good choice. <clears throat> But don't know what other tank mates for them. Well, lucky for you, I just filmed a video yesterday on what I'd put with Hedranda Formosa, which is the least killifish. And I believe I went with pink ram's horn snails, those guys, and uh, pygmy corridors, I believe. But you'll have to wait for the video because I feel like I might have done something a little different. But definitely plant that sucker up. What plants do you recommend that grow fast and make the tank look bushy and jungle-like that you sell? Uh, Pogo, Pogo stem and Salatus octopus, very fast grower. Um, what else is like, oh man, that thing's out of control. Pacopa, Pacopa's a real fast grower, and water sprite. Although I think we're sold out of water sprite. So, you. Yeah. Who would give, wait, who would you get... My brain has trouble sometimes when I think the sentence is broken. Who would you get jewel cichlid eggs survive? So it's supposed to be how. How would you get jewel egg cichlids to survive and get the eggs to hatch and the fry to thrive successfully? Uh, typically, as long as the male and female, they're going to be fertilized. I never have fungus issues. And if you really wanted to try, just feed uh, live baby Brian every day. But even crushed up flake usually will raise them. They're, they're like breeding convicts. Pretty easy. Uh, why are my tetras getting ick while my corridors and guppies are not? Uh, is it ick in that case? It probably could be, you know. Just because something else isn't getting it doesn't necessarily mean anything. I would just treat the entire tank for ick. You know, it could be that your temperature is a little bit lower. Usually it's a stress thing. So what's stressing those cardinals out more than others? And it could be real easy that the food you're feeding, they're not able to eat very well. Or it could be that the temperature you're keeping or... Yeah. Any plans to sell wisteria? Wisteria we sold a ton of, but people complain nonstop because it's all immersed grown and they don't realize, they're like, oh, it's dying now. It's like, well, it's converting. And so that is another project of we need much better education before we can bring that product back. Do I ever get Pogostemon erectus? Uh, we don't order it in. It melts so hard when people are converting it that it's another problem of like, you sold me bad plants. Like, no. Oh. It just converts really hard. And so um, a lot of people, so mostly when we sell plants, the average person, nine out of 10 people are new to plants. And when a plant starts dying back, they assume we've sold them bad plants. They don't understand that it's actually, um, that it's actually a normal process. And so we do a lot of education for that. And we need to obviously do more because those products, you know, definitely got us more bad reviews than they should have. So yeah. Do I ever think about buying out my silent partner? Uh, yes. 
in, in so much so that if they were to ever sell it, I would buy it back, yes. Uh, but never looking to intentionally buy them out. They saw in me, they invested in me early on, and I hope to pay them back forever. Just like my employees. They see what we're doing. I hope to pay uh, them and keep growing with them forever. You know, I, I'm loyal to a fault when it comes to people that we work with long term. And you really have to... Um, push me to get out of a relationship with that. I value longevity. I value working with someone long term. I value someone believing in it, trying both, you know, both stick our neck out to make something work. Um, but yes, obviously be very, very lucrative for me at this point to buy out a silent partner, but no intentions. You know, I, I, it's hard for you to understand, but I'm, I'm only money driven to a point. As long as we can pay our bills, I'm not looking to, you know, like, oh, we raised $2 billion. Cool, I'm done. Like, it's a sustainable thing. Like, can I get these projects I want to do? Can I make a change to the hobby? Can I make a new product? Those are all very high on my want-to-do scale. Making money is there. Yes, don't get me wrong. Anyone that says they don't want to make money at all, I have a hard time believing. That being said, everyone needs some money. And, uh, you know, luckily it's coming in to a point where we can at least do what we want to do. And as long as that keeps happening... I'm not that sad, you know, there's definitely like this year profit wise, there'll probably be less profit than last year, which, you know, wasn't insane, but we'll have better infrastructure, right? So there's some of those things that you just have to invest in for years to come. I'm building, you know, I'm trying to build this company that can like weather the storm. And if we suck all the money out of that in profits, you can't weather a storm, you know? So it's like, if I, if I took all the money I could out of the business and I go buy, you know, a sports car and then YouTube makes a change and I don't make any more money, we just go out of business. Instead, it's like, instead of buying that sports car, legit, we bought a minivan. So I bought a minivan uh, so that we could pick up more plants. You know, could I have bought a sports car and taken out a loan and doing all, done all that stuff? Yes. But the van, the dad van, as I call it, and this is something that, we pre-drove in uh, Texas. We rented it in Texas. I wanted to make sure it was going to do everything we needed to do, and it did. And we gave a lot of YouTubers a ride around at Dallas Aquashella. Uh, it's the same van that uh, M. Howe 9 was driving us around for the past two years. So it's one of those like, ah, oh, it's been like two years now. This van makes a lot of sense. The other van we currently have was going to cost about $2,000 to get it fixed, and it was like, it's getting old. We drove it for the last 20, well, not 20 years, only 19 you know, so we got 19 years out of that. And so we're like, well, let's buy the 2019 version of that, drive it for another 20 years in business. And uh, so, yes, I basically drive a van full-time dad van. And so, because I don't leave the house a lot. And when I do, it's usually bringing stuff to the shop or going to the airport and picking stuff up. So, yeah. Is there still a clearance area on the website? Uh, nope. We basically got rid of all the clearance. We did that big, like, get rid of the products we want to get rid of and we haven't brought any of them back so there's not really any clearance so nope not at the moment all right i'm thinking it's time to eat we've gone four hours at this point i'm hungry and i know i can help so let me do one more sales pitch here uh hopefully now that we're coming to an end you can finalize your order get that order placed use the code 300k save 10 percent uh, I appreciate all the brand new members. I appreciate all the super chats. I hope you guys are having a good Easter, whether you're having dinner with someone, whether you already did brunch or whatever you're doing. I'm um, hoping my wife will get to come home at a reasonable hour sometime today and we can do dinner. And uh, yeah, we'll get everything shipped out. Let me look at the numbers real quick. From what I see, what I see right now, I believe we'll probably be able to get everything out tomorrow. Well, that's not true. I don't know how many orders are going to come in the rest of the night because this only goes till midnight, right? So, you know, there's another nine hours left. So everything will ship by the end of Tuesday. I'm pretty confident of that barring any uh, power outage or internet outage or something like that. But I see how many orders uh, are there and I think we can get it out by the end of Tuesday. If not, hopefully by Wednesday. We've got a lot of people working and uh but hopefully you know we get flooded with orders tonight and it's like oh yes we're gonna have a hard time fulfilling that i've even got jimmy penciled in to go help pack tomorrow because it just it's the mentality for our business is customers first packages first and so even though he's got about 10 videos he could be editing we can't 
do that until we get the packages out. No one should ever have to wait any longer than we have to. That being said, I personally will be locked down in some meetings. I've got to be on someone else's podcast and all that kind of stuff. So I realize I'm the old, my own exception to that rule, but we put as many people towards a problem as we can to uh, do that. And I hope you guys see that reflected in our quick shipping. Whoa, I kicked the camera. Don't do that. There we go. Enhance. Uh, so yeah, thank you for everyone, for everyone, to everyone for placing an order. Uh, buy all of our stuff. And I'll help answer questions when I get off of here while I'm eating. Hopefully it's not a bologna sandwich out of crackers. And hopefully there's like a case of Reese's peanut butter cups that are being delivered by Taco Bell right now. Uh, I think that's it. Four hours in the bag. Time to go take a shower. That's right. If I can find the button, the button. Oh, there it is. Share this out. Hit a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll probably see you on Wednesday. Make sure all that gets heard. Spirit.